I teach on three days, four days no classes. I was thinking I may also get uh, if uh, your university needs extra teachers, I can teach there. Oh, yes. They need. I don't know, but you should come. Yeah, I. Because I would. <laughs> Yeah, uh, internal medicine, you know, I teach best. Inter uh, internal medicine. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, it is all about, I know they need teachers always, but it is about how to approach them, who to approach. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, what is the name? No, I haven't heard. Contact, okay. okay. You also can talk with him. Yeah, uh, If they need extra teachers, because I'm free. So most of the time. In the afternoons, uh, every day I'm free. Yeah. So, we already covered adrenergic and cholinergic. I will review that. So, I will cover that in the end, okay. So let's first cover sedative, hypnotic and anxiolytic drugs. So first drugs are, are benzodiazepines, barbiturate and alcohol. See now these drugs okay first you open your page. Okay, these drugs cause dose dependent CNS depression. So <coughs> at lowest dose what they cause? sedation and anxiolysis at very low dose they cause paradoxical disinhibition okay this is why some people you know who drink a little alcohol they become more social because they cause paradoxical disinhibition they disinhibit your mind they open your mind but as you go they cause sedation anxiolysis you go little higher they cause hypnosis and then anesthesia means this is anesthetic dose what if you go above anesthetic dose? If you give too much anesthetic, too much of any of uh, I mean these drugs, especially benzo, uh, uh, barbiturate and alcohol, what will they cause? Medulla depression. Now, what does medulla control? What does medulla control? Respiration and cardiovascular system. So, what will happen to patient? He will die. Okay. So, you see, too much alcohol, some patient die. Okay, too much barbiturate, some patient die. Okay, but what about the benzodiazepam? It reaches a plateau. Okay, does the benzodiazepine goes beyond this coma and death? No. So an overdose or toxicity of benzodiazepine can it kill? No. So benzodiazepine, if someone takes too much benzodiazepine, he can sleep a lot, but he cannot die. But what about barbiturate and alcohol? They can kill because because benzodiazepine reach a plateau and do not go beyond that. Okay, that is very important. So barbiturate overdose and alcohol overdose can kill. So you understand this dose dependent e effect, okay? And especially important this benzodiazepine, okay? Because this is a plateau. It cannot go beyond that, so it cannot kill. But other drugs, barbiturate, alcohol, they can cause medulla depression, coma, and death. <laughs> now, what is their mecha <coughs> mechanism of action? Their mechanism of action is that they open chloride channels on GABA complex. So, GABA is the receptor for these drugs. But you see, each one has its own binding site. For example, GABA binds at alpha unit. Benzodiazepine binds at gamma unit, barbiturate binds at beta. But do you need to memorize this? No, just to understand that each one has its own receptor. No need to memorize. Okay? Yes, USML is not about memorization, it is about understanding. How do you activate any nerve? Do you depolarize or hyperpolarize? means how you activate a muscle or nerve you need to call depolarization or hyperpolarization depolarization so what will happen if you cause hyperpolarization it will be activated or difficult to activate 
difficult and these drugs this is what these drugs cause hyperpolarization but there are two mechanisms either okay chloride means it is negated card should come inside or potassium should go out in both case what will be inside more negative or more positive if chloride influx chloride enters a cell or potassium leaves a cell potassium is positive charge so what will happen if positive charge leaves a cell so inside will be more negative or positive negative and this is what we call hyperpolarization in depolarization you see inside of a cell becomes more inside of a cell membrane becomes more positive okay so so you have two ways of causing hyperpolarization either either negative um, charge should go inside or positive charge should go out so gaba a has means in that chloride can, uh, chloride goes inside but gaba b potassium goes outside okay if you know the mechanism that they activate gaba channels and the mechanism is a hyperpolarization then you need to pay attention to this word benzodiazepine benzodiazepine you need to know pay attention to this word it potentiates gaba means it makes gaba stronger so it increases the frequency okay if you go and look at barbiturate it prolongs gaba activity and it prolongs means it prolongs the duration of chloride channel opening but it increases it doesn't prolong but it increases the frequency of chloride channel opening okay you understand this frequency means many times duration means how long it is open so this small thing you need to understand and they have no gaba mimetic activity means benzodiazepine themselves has no gaba mimetic activity but what about barbiturate <laughs> they have gaba mimetic activity at higher doses for example at a higher doses benzodiazepine can they act alone no this is why if you go previously they reach a plateau but at a higher dose at a higher dose barbiturate can open gaba channels by themselves because they have mimetic gaba mimetic activity this is why this is why alcohol and barbiturate you see this is why alcohol and barbiturate can cause medullary depression coma and death is this clear now so that is a small difference potentia potentiation increase in frequency no gaba mimetic activity okay barbiturate they prolong prolong means duration and they have gaba mimetic activity so will usml ask these small small things no usml is not about small things it is about concept so usml will not about potentiation prolong but usml will ask about concept okay and these receptors they act through busy receptors busy receptors are part of gaba complex again you have two type of busy receptor busy one and busy two do you need to remember these sub types no so usml is not about memorization it is about understanding later on i will tell you why this sub division is important because we have separate drugs for busy one and we have separate drugs for busy two so in older drugs we have you know older generation iphone older drugs they act on both receptors for example if we, we want to give them for anxiety what they what problem they will cause sedation patient will be sleepy all the time okay if we give them um, for example uh, sleep uh, sleeping these drugs can be used for as a sleep drugs they can be used as a anxiety anti anxiety if we give them anxiety for example i take it now i am anxious but then i will be feel sleepy all the time i cannot work but on the other uh, part what if we give them for sleep sedation then they will cause cognitive problem in the morning you go to office you are still feel sleepy okay so we have now new type of drugs new type of drugs means next generation drugs they work either on busy one or busy two okay as we are become more technological we do more research so if you use a drug for sleep which receptor should you stimulate busy one or busy two busy one okay so that drug is zolpidem and zalplan have you ever heard about it 
okay i will they are coming next okay so they and the barbiturate do not act through busy receptors they have their own binding sites on gaba a complex okay and also in a complex one of electron transport chain if you have studied biochemistry barbiturate also in a complex one of electron transport chain but that is in biochemistry so these are drugs any drug that ends with zolam especially are zepam they are benzodiazepine temazepam alprazolam anxiety anxiety sleep disorders <laughs> so most of them are metabolized metabolized by liver to active compounds except for which drugs oxyzepam temazepam and lorazepam how will you remember them you have to make it easy to remember what about lot lot okay except lot drugs what are lot drugs lorazepam okay oxyzepam and temazepam okay when you have to memorize something make it is easy so any drug that has a very long duration of action such as diazepam what we use them for anxiety muscle relaxation and withdrawal state withdrawal state i will teach you later on but if any drug has a short very short acting we use them for what very very short acting we use them for uh, means anesthesia that is midazolam temazepam oxazepam they are used for sleep disorders okay lorazepam it is used for iv form is used for epilepsy what about anxiety panic and phobia panic and phobia are for short period okay so for them which drug we will use alprazolam but are do you are you tested uh, these drugs individually no okay you have to remember as a group as a group all these are benzodiazepine okay and very short acting that is midazolam and after that a little more short acting such as temazepam azepam they are used for sleep disorder and uh, diazepam it is very long acting so it is used for withdrawal status and lorazepam is also used for status epileptics because when someone is status epileptics we have to use a drug iv and lorazepam can be used iv we cannot use midazolam it can also be used iv because midazolam is a very short acting i am explaining these but your family doesn't care about these small small things okay because if your family wants to ask about benzodiazepine it will be you five choices a b c d out of five choices one will be benzodiazepine other will be other choices it will not tell you a b both are diazepam no your family is not about small small things it is about big picture so you will you use these drugs for sleep disorder in usa what is best drug for sleep disorder that is over the available over the counter and, and diphenhydramine okay i will cover that this is antihistamine okay if you you have to use someone with really sleep problem you cannot use this because they act on both bz1 and bz2 and these are older generation drugs so means what are these use for anxiety also we have now new drugs this is older for anxiety which drug we use they will come later on so what are their uses left for midazolam is used for anesthesia because it is good epilepsy it not um, epilepsy only status epileptics you know about status epileptics i am covering this in epilepsy chapter okay later on and so what are their uses withdrawal status and muscle again epilepsy means someone is having epileptic attacks seizures but those seizures continue for more than 30 minutes you know when patient someone has seizure we give some drug seizures stop but what if seizures don't stop and go beyond 30 minutes then what we call that status epileptic should a patient be seizing for 30 minutes why if patient is seizing means the respiratory muscles are also seizing can that patient breathe no and if ask patient means patient has a seizing patient has breathing problems means a hypoxia and neurons you know neurons are very sensitive they don't get enough oxygen these cells die and that patient can have permanent brain damage okay so this is why this is one of the best drug for and first line drug for status ap 
lifting. So what are their uses? For panic phobia, will you use drug, drug, these drugs? We have better drugs. For acute, you can use because alprazolam is short acting. But chronically, can you use these drugs? No, because they cause sleep, sleepiness, sedation, and they cause cognitive problem. Okay, so what are their uses left with? Withdrawal state, withdrawal state, and coming to that later on, and state is epileptics. For other disorders, we have better drugs. Okay, so please pay attention to these things. So uses of barbiturate. Now phenobarbital is used for seizures. It is used for epilepsy. Okay. Thiopental is very short acting and it is can be used IV, so it is used for induction of anesthesia. What is induction of anesthesia? To put a patient in anesthesia. We have drugs for induction of anesthesia, then we have drugs to maintain anesthesia. So because this is short acting, so can it be used for maintenance of anesthesia? No, it can be used only for induction. They are metabolized. <laughs> Remember from first chapter. What were general inducers of P450 system? anti seizure drugs. One was phenobarbital, other was what? Phenytoin. First chapter that I covered last time. Last time. So they are metabolized by liver. <coughs> but which system? P450 <coughs> system. And any drug that induces P450 system, they are contraindicated in porphyrias. Have you covered porphyrias in biochemistry? This is very important. Because I cannot cover porphyria here because it is a biochemistry topic. Okay, so anyway, right now remember it when we get some chance because you already covered biochemistry, so I don't know I will be able to teach you that or not. So in porphyria as P450 system means this is contraindicated. You can go to biochemistry and read on your own why it is contraindicated. So tolerance to and dependence on sedative hypnotics. Conic usually is to tolerance. What is tolerance? You now some people initially think, oh, this is just one cigarette. I'm not user to uh, smoking uh, uh, too many cigarettes. So initially he uses just one cigarette, but over the time, you know, he becomes tolerant to that one cigarette or one glass of alcohol. Then why? Because now he is not getting the same kick, the same effect from one glass of alcohol or one cigarette. Now he needs two cigarettes. After two or three months, he again becomes tolerant to those two cigarettes. Now to get this, because his body becomes used to it. Okay, his body becomes used to it. It becomes tolerant. So now he need to need three uh, cigarettes. So that is known as tolerance. Over time. He will become what? Psychologically and physically dependent. Now we call it abuser. Okay? It means drug abuser. It means alcohol abuser. You know, chronic alcoholic. So what is psychological and physical dependence? Psychological dependence is means even though you have no physical dependence, but you mentally means can't do anything until you get that drug. You know, sometimes if they do, you can't cigarette, you mentally not feeling okay. That is psychological dependence. What is physical dependence? Physical dependence means you can, if it is chronic alcoholic or a heroin abuser, if they, you can initially, they, they ultimately they become psychologically and physically dependent. Now, if they don't get drug, what they have? They have rebound symptoms because they are physio, uh, physiologically. Uh, dependent means you are when you drink coffee daily your body becomes dependent on caffeine if you don't drink coffee what you get headache and these things you can't work okay but caffeine is not that much addicting but these drugs are really very addicting okay they have abuse liability this is why we don't prescribe benzodiazepine for sleep because they have abuse liability same for barbiturate. What are withdrawal signs of benzodiazepine? What we use them for? We use them for sleep and anxiety. So the withdrawal symptoms will be same. What will happen? Okay, if someone 
you know, uh, someone is chronically using antihypertensive drug. What will happen if he suddenly stops that drug? His hypertension will shoot. Okay. So when you use a drug chronically, you should not stop that drug abruptly. You have to taper it slowly. So withdrawal signs are same means rebound and uh, means insomnia, anxiety, and what we use them for? Seers. Okay. Patient can even when these drugs were used for anti epilepsy. Now you stop it, that patient will have seizures. So should you stop them suddenly? Never. Okay. Now withdrawal signs are barbiturate and ethanol. Of course, anxiety and agitation. But with alcohol, what you see? Life threatening seizures. And we call them tremors, del uh, delirium tremors. Not only seizures, but that patient will have delirium hallucination as elephants in room are there are snakes on my skin and they give you classic case in your if someone is admitted to the hospital in hospital can they get alcohol no in hospital most patient when you admit they lie they say oh we are abstinent we don't use alcohol but exactly after 42 hours he suddenly starts having seizures and it means hallucination what will you what choice will you pick Alcohol. Patient is having alcohol withdrawal symptoms, signs, signs and symptoms. For any kind of withdrawal signs and symptoms, what is best drug? We just covered it. Diazepam. Okay. So will you give them alcohol or diazepam? What is management of withdrawal? Supportive and long acting benzodiazepine. What was long acting benzodiazepine? It was diazepam. Okay, diazepam is a long acting. For withdrawal symptoms, you will give short acting or long acting. You have to use a drug that should work for long acting. Okay. Will you use benzodiazepine for anxiety and sleep? No. Pharmacologically, you can use, but now we have better drugs. Okay. So because they have abuse liability, you become addicted to them, and plus. They cause cognitive problems. If you use for anxiety, they cause sleep problems. You know, you must have our most celebrities. They over overtake overdoses of drugs and they die. Even Michael Jackson and many of you. Why? Because they take multiple drugs that I have seen as depressant effect. Maybe they are using heroin. Along with the heroin, they are also drinking alcohol. So, what are those CNS uh, uh, drugs? Anesthetic, antihistamine, opiate, beta blocker. Beta blocker is also CNS. So, if someone is uh, using opiate, now he has cold, you are giving antihistamine. Are already using opiate, now he is also drinking alcohol. Okay? Uh, do you uh, watch TV serial Dr. Rush? In this means, uh, in, uh, in this uh, week's program, there was a over problem of overdose of opiate. He was close to death, and so means anyway. You never add two depressants together because their effect will be additive, and then they can cause medullary respiratory depression. And what barbiturates do? They induce metabolism of which system? First chapter, P450 system. So what they will do to other drugs? You know P450 system, all lipid soluble drugs are metabolized P450 system. So if barbiturate induced P450 system means our P450 system is more active. So what will happen to these drugs? They will be metabolized very quickly. So will do their effect? No. If you are giving someone for warfare and for anticoagulation. So will warfarin work? No, that patient's blood will coagulate. Okay. So non-busy drugs. So you see, I told you that benzodiazepine drugs we nowadays don't use for sleep and sedation, anxiety, because we have better drugs. What are those better drugs? Zolpidem and Zalplan and Buspirone. Look. Zolpidem and Zalplan are the uh, benzodiazepine drugs or non benzodiazepine? Non benzodiazepine. Um, through which receptor they act? 
BZ1 and what was job of BZ1? Sedation, sleep. So you use them for sleep. So they have less effect on cognitive. They are used in sleep disorders. Is there any tolerance or abuse liability? No. What about benzodiazepine? Benzodiazepine, they have tolerance and abuse liability. Pills, benzodiazepine also act on BZ2 receptors. They, they cause cognitive problem. So which drug for sleep you will prefer? Zolpidem and Zalplan. I used both. I uh, mean, uh, benzo and uh, Zolpidem. But Zolpidem is way better than because that cause cognitive problem many complications. Okay, so Zolpidem is better if you want to use drug for sleep, even if for prescribing. Okay, so this is uh, and then Bisporon. Bisporon does it act on GABA receptors? No, it acts on serotonin, but it is a partial agonist. Partial agonist means can it 100% open uh, serotonin receptors? Remember from chapter 2, partial agonist only activate receptors 50%. Because 100%, if uh, it is a full agonist, it again will have bad side effect, such as seizures and these things that will occur in future chapters. So, what is used for? Generalized anxiety disorders. You see, when someone is ang generalized anxiety, what is generalized anxiety? You know, some people are anxious about everything. They have to attend class every day and they are just anxious. Okay? They have exams. Before exams, they are anxious. They have to go for shopping and before going shopping, they are anxious. Means they are anxious about everything. Generalized anxiety disorder. In that case, which drug you will use? Buspirone or diazepam? Benzodiazepam. Why? Because if you give them benzodiazepine, patient will feel sleepy all the time. So you see, buspirin is a non-sedative, but and it takes one to two weeks of effect. So if one has a generalized, generalized anxiety disorder, means now we have to give a drug that should be long-acting and non-sedative. So what is best drug? Buspirin. What about someone has a phobia? And panic disorder, phobia and panic disorder are they longer, uh, longer uh, means uh, duration disorder or short duration disorder? Panic disorder, you have panic disorder and this, it just disappears in 20 minutes. They are very short acting. Panic disorder, okay? You just uh, means, uh, get in elevator, you feel panicky. Very short acting. In that case, you need a short acting drug, long acting drug. In that case, you can use benzodiazepine, alprazolam, short acting. Okay, why? Because that is short acting, and this is not chronic. You will not have to use benzodiazepine chronically. You will have to use a drug for only short term. So, whenever there is an overdose of benzodiazepine, which drug will you use? What is antidote for it? Flumazenil. Okay. So, any any overdose. Okay. Benzodiazepine, which drug you will use? Flumazenil. Can flumazenil, uh, is the flu, uh, flumazenil antidote for bipituate and alcohol? No, it is only for benzodiazepine. And flumazenil also works for zolpidem because it is busy one receptor. So, what is antidote? If someone, you know, sometimes uh, these patients, these are sleep drugs. Some patients take a whole bottle to commit suicide, but will they die? No, I already told you benzodiazepine cannot kill. If you want to frighten your family members with suicide and don't want to die, which drug you will use? Okay, benzodiazepine. Because you will be sleep for 3 4 days and all your demands will be met. So, will you take barbiturate to frighten your family? No, so don't do this, okay? <laughs> Got this? New trick. So now next chapter is alcohol. All alcohols cause sinus. We already covered that alcohol works through which receptor? GABA. And all alcohols cause metabolic acidosis. You see, in their metabolism, what is the end result? Oxalic acid and formic acid. So is and what is the usual alcohol that we drink? 
it is ethylene glycol methanol or it is ethanol ethanol okay ethanol is metabolized to what acetic acid you know all alcohols are metabolized to acid acetic acid can be metabolized in our body but what about oxalic acid and formic acid can they be metabolized in our body so what will happen if they accumulate in our body death okay and uh, in our country it is very common in india you know in uh, germany in marriage parties many people drink alcohol and they die remember what kind of alcohol it is ethanol no it is methanol or ethylene glycol methanol is used in wood painting ethylene glycol it is antifreeze that we use in car same thing you know but children sometimes can drink it so you see and when oxalic acid okay accumulates it severe metabolic acidosis what will happen if someone puts you into acid tub full of acid you will dissolve so severe metabolic acidosis will dissolve your body if patient survives what will happen both kidneys will be gone ethylene glycol antifreeze okay methanol same severe metabolic acidosis patient will die means there is cns depression respiratory failure depression it is same thing medullary depression we know what will happen if patient survives patient will be blind in usa means uh, you get alcohol freely so it is not and it is very cheap it is not a big problem but in our countries alcohol is forbidden okay in india it is forbidden not that much but in my country but in the rural areas people make their own alcohol sometimes there is a big party or marriage and there is a big demand they can't get means you will alcohol so they try methanol or ethylene glycol to make themselves pills that alcohol we get in china usa it is comes from certified factories and they know how much percent this how much this percent but when people make themselves they are uneducated no technique they use methanol and we call it raw alcohol or thara in our country in sindhi thara have you heard about it you can ask your parents tharu what is tharu okay so ultimately what it will do oxalic and in some marriage parties means 80 people die 70 people die means they drink this alcohol enjoy they do enjoy but 80 70 people die have you heard such news in india in my country means of course it is not so common but every once in a year these cases happen okay but these cases can is 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 still happen because ethylene glycol is antifreeze what if the kid opens and drinks it so first you see now problem is ethylene glycol is first metabolite gives glycoaldehyde and glycol and then glycoaldehyde is metabolized by aldehyde dehydrogenase dehydrogenase into Uh, some kind of acid maybe oxalic form it now if there is an overdose of this drug what you, dr what you will you, you, what you will do because you have to prevent formation of all complication arise from what this acid so now to prevent the formation of this acid you have to use a drug that will block this enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase okay so what is the name of that drug that is fomipazole so any overdose of alcohol okay ethylene glycol or methanol which drug what is the antidote fomipazole okay when you are using fomipazole what you are doing you are blocking the synthesis of acid okay but are you getting rid of this alcohol it is still in body then how will you get rid of it hemodialysis what if 70 people drink it and in our countries means not so many facilities to hemodialyze 70 patients at a time okay so but you will use fomipazole but you that patient may also require hemodialysis because we have to get rid of this from body so ethanol but ethanol is a usual alcohol that we drink and it is metabolized to water acetic acid this is not that much dangerous because acetic acid can be used in our body okay now how will you remember that oxalic acid causes nephrotoxicity and formic acid causes ocular you see they are in bold 
Well, these are tested, you need to know. Anti-free, I don't know how you will remember, but it has to, but what means, what I did, anti-freeze. When it is freezing cold, will you go out to pee? No, so this is how I remember. <laughs> what is you, you have to choose your own method. You know, I am very bad in memorization, so I always have to find some way. So, you see, alcohol. If you drink alcohol, what it, at low doses, what it increases? Sociable, you become more sociable. But what you take too much, then get uh, disturbance, attacks. Have you seen an uh, alcohol patient uh, wobbling around? Attacks, yeah. Then ultimately, respiratory depression and death. Okay? So, that is acute alcohol. And uh, uh, this patient can have acetyl high toxicity. Okay? So, sometimes there is a chronic alcohol. Now, we use want to use a drug so that patient should avoid alcohol. Which drug you will use? Disulfiram. Why? Because if you give someone disulfiram, now he drinks alcohol, disulfiram will block acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. So, what will accumulate? And what acetaldehyde body will do? Now, they are wanting headache, hypotension. So, anytime he drinks alcohol, he feels severe headache, nausea, vomiting. So, will he touch alcohol? No. That we use for chronic means give to someone so that he should avoid it. But there are some drugs, I forgot to put here, they must be in pharmacological plan book, that have disulfiram like effect, metronidazole. Have you heard about metronidazole flagell? It is very common. Flagell, have you heard about it? Metronidazole flagell. Metronidazole. It is used for diarrhea and these stomach upset. It is very common. What if someone uh, you give uh, someone as uh, means uh, you giving someone uh, uh, flagell to someone he goes and drinks alcohol. That metronidazole disulfiram like effect. What what he will have? Nausea, vomiting, and headache. So any drug that has disulfiram like activity. There are some drugs that I forgot to put here. In that case, will you advise that patient to take alcohol? No, because he will have a bad experience. And alcohol patient, remember alcohol patient has deficiency of two vitamins. Folate and thiamine. Why? Because if you are a chronic alcoholic, your body produces acetaldehyde. And what acetaldehyde does? It combines with folate and activate it. It combines with thiamine. So, have you heard about Wernski's course cough in vitamin problems, CNS chapter? Okay, what was that? That was because of salmon. Okay, I will cover, I don't know because you already covered biochemistry, no, now I can't cover it. But salmon deficiency causes Wernski's course cough. Okay, chronic alcoholism, what problem it does? Look, alcohol is good. And they, this is test concept is tested, and as a doctor, you should need to know. When this alcohol, it is metabolized acetic acid, but in the metabolism, what we produce? NADH. Remember from biochemistry, what is NADH? It is full of what? Energy. You covered biochemistry, you know, NADH is full of ATP. So, uh, for example, uh, when you drink alcohol, what your body has? Your body has a lot of NADH. So, body's NADH means a lot of ATP. Now, your body is energy rich. But, does energy mean nutrition? Nutrition means glucose. Okay? So, normally, when you are low in glucose, what your liver produces? Glucose. Glycogenolysis, after glycogen is depleted, your body produces glucose. But that liver will produce glucose only when body is low in ATP. Because the liver's, liver is made in such a way that it sees when body is low in energy, means we need glucose. So liver produces glucose. So if you are drinking alcohol, your body is full of ATP, because there is a lot of NADH, will your liver produce glucose? So you will have what? Chronic. And what energy brain can use? Can brain use fatty acids? Brain can only use glucose. So these patients have chronic hypo. 
glycine when you have body is full of energy means atp whatever you eat what body does to that It stores that as a what fat you see when whatever when we eat food whatever our body can use what rest body stores as what fat so now you are drinking alcohol means body is full of atp what patient means that body will do to that food you are eating liver cannot uh, metabolize it so liver thinks i am already full of atp need let's store it and art it does makes what fat so liver itself becomes fat your body also become hyperlipidemic okay so fatty liver we already know it is very bad and is fat good no so your body becomes a factory to produce fat and hypoglycemia chronic is high chronic hypoglycemia good so so this is very bad and what about whatever long term alcohol if you the patient is alcoholic now whatever little money he gets he spends on alcohol does he take in a food protein so what will happen to muscle muscle wasting so chronic alcoholism use is it good alcohol is very bad and then gout gout means alcohol is metabolized into lactate that uh, lactate competes with what so alcohol is contraindicated in gout remember rheumatology covered that any patient who has gout we should avoid alcohol now you understand this concept in biochemistry they give you case someone who is a marathon no marathon need to run for 3 4 hours when they run are they eating when they are running so they need glucose where does the glucose come from glycogen in liver but after 2 or 3 hours that glycogen is gone now where does that liver come from gluco neogenesis you know by gluconeogenesis liver is making what glucose now that patient you know was sweating during marathon running and he thinks even he reaches finish line he suddenly drinks beer okay as he drinks beer okay after 2 3 minutes he collapses and is dead what was the problem here that uh, they can test this in biochemistry but you should also know he was hypoglycemic so his liver was making what glucose by gluconeogenesis now he used beer beer has alcohol as soon as alcohol enters body alcohol is as atp so what is the liver thinks now i am energy full i need to shut down gluconeogenesis when he shut liver shuts down gluconeogenesis what happens to glucose glucose goes down hypoglycemia severe brain does not get enough glucose and that patient is so after running too much 2 to 3 hours or after any kind of exertion is it wise to use beer or some uh, juice it is better use juice because juice will give you water juice will give you energy glucose so that brain can use it now you understand the concept of high why chronic alcoholism patient have hypoglycemia why chronic alcohol patient has fatty liver so so alcohol is energy rich but it is nutrition zero nutrition i would say it is energy rich but no nutrition nutrition means glucose that glucose should come because brain can you only use that so don't think that alcohol gives a lot of atp so it is good atp doesn't mean nutrition nutrition means glucose okay so this is very important concept do you drink too much is it too i tried but i i mean so used for a short time then i didn't because it gives me jerd and jerd is very bad otherwise i enjoyed it but jerd is should we finish this or wait for 5 minute what do you think finish it okay. i think you are energy rich you will drink alcohol <laughs> okay so epilepsy anti convulsant or epilepsy pharmacology is very interesting very easy but you must study with the question because without question i again repeat I, it you can't learn anything so seizures you see seizure means you know epileptic attacks they result from episodic electrical discharge in cerebral neurons because 
because some neurons in your brain go crazy and they have prolonged depolarization they keep shooting so you have seizures so during which sustained high frequency repetitive firing occurs followed by prolonged hyper you see some patient have seizure attacks for 2 3 minutes after they they sleep why they are sleeping because they go crazy first they fire 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 after they have prolonged hyper first they are depolarized but after that are hyperpolarized so what is the goal goal of is to maintain normal or restore normal patterns of electrical activity okay so electrically these neurons become crazy so mechanism of action mechanism of action is you have to decrease conduction you know all conduction neurons occurs through which channels you know action potential sodium channel so you will block sodium influx through fast sodium channel and that is the mechanism of carbamazepine and phenytoin are you increase inhibitory tone what was that you increase inhibitory tone what was that in inhibitory tone gaba mediated hyperpolarization because gaba also causes hyperpolarization that we just covered barbiturate and benzodiazepine are decrease excitatory effect of glutamic acid glutamic acid is excitatory neuro, uh, neurotransmitter we have to decrease that that is through lamotrigine and topiramate and felbamate so these sub type of acid ampa nmda no need to remember are in thalamic neurons block presynaptic calcium channel for any neuro neurotransmitter to be released no calcium first enters a uh, means a presynaptic neuron and then neurotransmitter released if you prevent calcium influx can neurotransmitter be released no so all are these mechanisms i will tell you in pharmacology you need to know three things mechanism use and side effect just we covered in uh, alcohol what was side effect hypoglycemia okay if you go back you must uh, note this in hypoglycemia fatty liver gout folate and Thiamine deficiency. They can test you anything. As a general doctor, this is A B C. Not too much. We don't teach you in details. So I uh, means uh, you should know this these things. So what mechanism use and side effect? But common side effect, rare side effect. If it is life threatening, then common side effect. Every doctor of drugs, every doctor should know. so you have seizure types have you covered these seizure types what is partial simple simple or complete what is partial partial means my only one hand this is undergone seizure or one leg or one side of face okay what is then that can be simple or that can be complex what is complex complex means any patient who loses consciousness in partial okay a one part of brain is firing it means maybe part of brain that is controlling hand okay that is firing what about general tonic clonic have you seen someone like this seizures then stop then again seizures okay first he in tone increases and that patient you know often falls down on the floor and then he is seizing like that Okay, if you go to YouTube, uh, you must watch all these videos because okay, uh, partial means one part of brain is firing, so one part of body. General means all whole brain is firing. If whole brain is firing, your whole body is seizing. Okay, your body seizes, then loses tone, means it is clonic, Rel relaxes, then again seizes. Okay, so then what is general absence? What is general absence? And this is very interesting. i am sitting here okay this often is noted by parents or teacher in small children so suddenly i am staring blank i am out of this world means i am absent from this world i am oblivious to everything and these happen only for 2 or 3 seconds but what what in a minute you get 3 5 attacks your parent is saying something to you will you listen, listen completely if you get two or three attacks of this in uh, uh, in a one minute 
Our teacher is giving a lecture. Can that children pay attention? No. You see, he's he's uh, sitting like this, but he becomes absent from this world, just staring blank like this, oblivious to everything. When he comes back, he doesn't remember anything. Okay, that is general absence. You can also go to YouTube and see the videos. It's very interesting. And the status epileptics. I already told you that means patient keeps seizing for more than 30 minutes. If he is seizing, means respiratory muscles are seizing. Means he cannot breathe and hypoxia these problems. And seizing patient, are they conscious or unconscious? If his whole body is seizing, unconscious. So can they, can they maintain their gag reflex? What if they vomit? Where they it will go? Respiratory system, aspiration. I already covered asp uh, respiration. Aspiration is worst nightmare. Not only brain, but aspiration. They can bite their tongue and these things. Okay. So what is now? These drugs are very easy to remember. So what is drug of choice for partial and general? Okay, status epileptics. We already know we have to use a drug IV that has to be benzodiazepine. What is that? Lorazepam. We already covered our diazepam, but especially lorazepam. And for general absence, absence drug of choice is what? Ethosuximide. Second line is valproic acid. For all other, what is drug of choice? Valproic acid, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. Is it easy to remember? Okay. You can see VPC, valproic acid, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. But for general absence, you have to pick ethosuximide. Okay. A status epilepsy pick lorazepam and diazepam. More about epilepsy management that we will study in general medicine. So now you know the subtypes and you know the drugs, you know their mechanism. All drugs mechanisms are here. Okay, subtypes of epilepsy are here. Drug of choice, valproic acid, and these things are here. So what are we left with? Side effect. Now we have to study that. Many time we already know its mechanism. We already know it is used for seizure. We already know it. It follows which are other kinetic. There were three drugs that were following zero order kinetic. What were those? Remember from last uh, lecture, the high doses of phenytoin, ethanol, and uh, aspirin, acetyl acetyl. Okay, remember that. So zero order. There were three drugs that you need to remember. So it also induces P450 system. What are anti-epilepsy drugs that induce P450 system? One is phenytoin. Other is Barbiturate, we covered just now. These are general inducers of P450 system. Okay. Side effect, you know, they can cause CNS depression. All anticonversant, because they act on CNS, they can cause CNS depression. Uh, there are only two or three drugs that cause gingival hyperplasia. One is phenytoin, you have to remember. How do you remember other things? Osteomalacia vitamin D and megaloblastic folate, aplastic anemia. So you have to check. And uh, most of these drugs cause these problems. This cause hirsutism. I will later on tell you how to remember hirsutism. And these are also teratogenic. But which class they were? X or D? D. Because if we don't give anti-epileptic drugs and mother has seizures, baby will be lost. If we give this drug, baby may be um, uh, may live, but with what? Cleft lip and palate. So you want a baby dead or baby with cleft lip and palate? Cleft lip and palate. So they are which class? Although this is teratogenic, but benefits outweigh risk. So you will use this drug. Carbam is a mechanism we already know. It is also due to severe state epilepsy, but for one it is drug of choice. What is that? Trigeminal neuralgia. Have you heard about trigeminal neuralgia? Shooting pain in facial. You just talk, you chew something, something touches hair when you are shaving, it causes severe shooting pain. But just for seconds, for example, anything touches hair, even air touches hair. When you are shaving or when you are chewing something, anything touches, 
okay you have shooting means pain but that pain is just for few seconds but it is just a pain and shooting it is very bad so it is drug of choice and another it is used for bipolar disorder bipolar disorder how to remember uh, have you covered behavioral signs so it is one of drug for bipolar disorder carbamazepine Kama, pain okay and another epilepsy drug that is for use bipolar it is mania have you heard about mania and depression bipolar sometimes they are manic sometimes they are depressive sometimes very high sometimes very low but more about this i can only cover in behavioral signs here i just have to tell you that it is used for bipolar disorder it also induces p450 system no all anti convulsant drug can cause venous depression the what were side effect of previous drug osteomalacia megaloblastic anemia aplastic anemia these are same okay so exfoliative dermatitis i never heard about it so same teratogenistic cleft lip palate spina bifida okay so osteomalacia megaloblastic anemia and aplastic anemia you see both in phenytoin you see in also carbamazepine this is how you will remember it now what are you left with well practiced what is the mechanism of action similar to what was drug of choice in most epileptic types why because it has mechanism similar to phenytoin it also inhibits gaba it also blocks calcium channel drugs either block sodium channel or gaba or calcium but it blocks everything so it has multi mechanism mechanism so it is best drug okay it is used for seizure it is also used for bipolar but mania or depression mania carbamazepine can be used for mania depression but this is used for only mania but this is also used for migraine prophylaxis look phenytoin was only used for seizure now how you remember that because you know you have to memorize it because you have not gone to clinic so you have not prescribed drugs so you don't remember it phenytoin can only be used for seizure carbamazepine can be used for seizure it can be used for bipolar disorder but it has one extra use that is drug of choice what is that trigeminal neuralgia same way valprac as it can be used for seizure mania but it can also be used for something else what is that that is migraine prophylaxis okay so now how you remember this look phenytoin and carbamazepine induce p450 system then what does valprac as it does it inhibits okay and if phenytoin causes hirsutism hair overgrowth then what does valprac causes alopecia you know alopecia means hair loss okay now you see how it is different from phenytoin phenytoin induces p450 system this inhibits phenytoin causes hirsutism it causes alopecia now how you what are similarities between phenytoin and carbamazepine Phen, you see if you go back phenytoin causes old osteomalacia megaloblastic aplastic anemia and carbamazepine also causes that and this also causes increase a dh secretion so it can cause syndrome of an appropriate sidh remember sidh from endocrine system now this causes pancreatitis that uh, and plus hepatotoxicity so all drugs that cause liver toxicity they are very high yield so valproic acid is bad for liver it is for pancreatitis okay it is bad so you have to remember these things especially drugs that cause hepatotoxicity okay one drug we are covering that is valproic later on i will when uh, i reach each uh, teach you each drug then i will tell you this also causes hepat liver problem this also causes now it causes all almost all seizure drugs are teratogenic spina bifida okay now how will you remember you see you some it doesn't test these things but to be on the side if uh, said uh, safe side let's make it easy what does teratog uh, means uh, phenytoin cause cleft lip and palate 
then what was the last drug valproic acid what does that cause and what is the middle drug does both okay if you have to memorize you have to make it easy for you to say it okay then ethosuximide we know its mechanism already it is blocks calcium channels so what is used for used for essential so and let's uh, Uh, study now general features. You know, ethosuximide already covered that it is the best drug for what? Drug of choice, best drug. Anticonvulsants are depressants. They are additive with other serious depressant. If someone is, you know, those patient was epilepsy, epilepsy, they they take these drugs for many years. So will you stop these drugs suddenly? will you stop these drugs suddenly no avoid whenever you someone has been used drug for year or 6 month never stop a drug abruptly because this will precipitate what seizures and these are mostly induced p450 system so what will happen to efficacy of all contraceptives it will go down instead they can use condoms or some other method okay because all contraceptives and this is highly tested and when someone is pregnant which drug is safest you know babi drug because remember previous three four drugs were teratogenic so during pregnancy safest drug is you know babi drug now other anti conversion drugs felbamate and lamotrigine mechanism we already know they block glutamate receptors they are primary drugs or adjunct drugs look here they are adjunct they are not primary what are primary drugs primary drugs were valproic acid phenytoin and carbamazepine so if some patients seizures are not controlled with valproic acid carbamazepine then we will add so these are adjunct or add on what are second drug that you will add they may be felbamate and lamotrigine then when we come to side effect Felbamate, I have not seen any question, but lamotrigine it is highly tested. Stevens Johnson syndrome. Stevens Johnson syndrome I covered in dermatology, skin pathology. Okay, and uh, if you go there, did I cover it? Skin pathology I covered. It must be there. Stevens Johnson syndrome. Okay, you can go and uh, look at that. This is classic. there are very few drugs that cause steven johnson out of that one is lamotrigine and lamotrigine is highly tested okay so gabapentin it is also used in seer but is used for one other what is that neuropathic pain what is neuropathic pain what is neuropathic pain pain caused by nerves have you seen herpes you know sometimes herpes patient has severe pain okay we are young means it will just cause little burn but some old patient who has immune system is down they have herpes but very severe pain that pain is caused by which nerves and uh, one complication you have heard in diabetes what was it peripheral neuropathy have you heard about it? what are signs and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy what if you have peripheral neuropathy in leg or hand and the your hand or leg means you feel pins are tingling all the time will it be comfortable if someone you means uh, pricks you with pins all the time are tingling are burning or your hand is burning all the time okay it is not comfortable you know you can't sleep you can't work so that pain that is what type of pain neuropathic So for neuropathic pain, we can use two drugs. One is gabapentin. Okay, other I will cover later on. Right now, you just remember gabapentin. Other is a uh, um, amitriptyline, triptyline class of drugs. Um, okay, but uh, tricyclic antidepressant. That is antidepressant chapter. Tricyclic antidepressant. That is so. Now let's uh, talk about it again. For neuropathic pain, which two drugs you can use? Gabapentin and anti-tricyclic antidepressant uh, amitriptyline. For uh, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, what is the drug of choice? 
carbamaz ekleyin. Okay. And uh, for absence here, what is drug of choice? Taksimide. For uh, uh, lamotrogen, what side effect is classic? Stephen Johnson. Now, if you go read first aid, first aid is all these things. But first aid is for those students who already know basic. So we are just covering basic. Once you read this, then go back and read first aid. So they will be all important things. Okay. So now you know what is neuropathic pain also. So I think we can have a five minute break. Well, you just listen, but I talk, talk, talk. Five minutes, I think ten minutes break. Pharmacology is easy or difficult? But <laughs> everything is easy, but if you study, give time and solve questions. You have to study and you have to solve questions. So next is drugs used in anesthesia. So remember from first chapter, drugs that were highly fat soluble, which rules they follow? Redistribution. Remember first, because they are highly soluble, they first will go to CNS from that they will redistribute. But here it is so simple, they don't tell you even that much. So those drugs you will give by which route? IV or lungs? Anesthetic drug you give by lungs. But sometimes some very short acting for induction, we can use IV drug. We just covered in a uh, first chapter uh, today two drugs. What were those? Thiopental and midazolam. Remember, they were very short acting CNS depressant sedator. So we use them to induct. Okay. So induction for induction because we rapidly want to put patient on an anesthetic state so we can use IV drug but for maintenance we have to use something else okay so that should be long acting that can be used as a gas so now we have two prototype drugs one is a halothene other is a nitric oxide so here you have two values that is very important okay as a general doctor will you be doing dealing anesthesiology all the time so they just want to test you two or few things that are very easy. MAC value and blood gas ratio. Now what is MAC value? What is blood gas ratio? Let's go and study this. Anesthesia protocol always need several agents in combination. Inhaled anesthetics have varying potency in proportion their liquid solubility. So over here potency is known as what? MAC. For other drugs we used in potency, but here we use MAC. Minimal alveolar anesthetic concentration is defined as concentration of inhaled anesthetic as percentage of inspired air at which 50% of patients do not respond to surgical stimulus. What is surgical stimulus? Cutting. Okay, that is surgical. So MAC is a measure of potency. And uh, most anesthetic drug you give IV are as a part of inspired air. In, as a part of inspired air. So here instead of dose, what we will use? Percentage of inspired air. So it is a mere of potency, and so at which 50% of our patients do not respond to a surgical stimulus. More liquid soluble anesthetic lower the MAC and greater the because if it is more lipid soluble, it will be uh, a very fast cross membrane and go into blood. From blood, it will go into brain. So, more lipid soluble, greater potency, if more, po uh, more potent, if dose should be low or high. Remember from chapter 2, more potent drug get the same effect at a lower dose. Okay. So, it means uh, now lower the MAC, means percentage has to be lower. So, and MAC values are additive and of course MAC values will be lower in elderly and the presence of opiate are sedative because CNS depressants are always additive. Now rapid onset of uh, onset and recovery depend on blood gas ratio. So that was potency, MAC was potency. What is blood gas ratio? More soluble the anesthetic in blood, slower the anesthesia. What does it mean? Blood is water or blood is fat, lipid. Blood is water or blood is fat. 
water. So anything that is more soluble in water, it is water soluble or liquid soluble? Water soluble. Anything that is water soluble, can it cross membranes freely? So it will be slower in onset or faster? Slower. Now understand this concept. So anesthetics with a high blood gas ratio are associated with slow onset. High blood gas ratio means more of it will be in blood, less of it will be in uh, gas form. Okay. Anesthetics with a high blood gas uh, also associated with slow recovery. What about anesthetics with low blood gas ratios? Low blood gas ratio means that is not soluble in blood. Mostly it is in gas form. Blood form soluble in blood is low, but a high more part of it is in gas form. So this ratio is low. So it will have fast onset and recovery. Now you understand this blood gas ratio. Okay, you also understand MAC MAC is potency, blood gas ratio, what does indicate? Slower onset or fast onset. Now over here, which drug has a high MAC value? Nitric oxide, you see it is 104%, but it is just 0.1%. So which is more potent? Nitric oxide or halothene? Halothene is very very potent because when you give nitric oxide 104 percent of inspired air has to be what nitric oxide what will be the oxygen part it will go down or decreased so and now you see one value was mac value what was the blood gas ratio which has a high blood gas ratio it is halothene so what will be faster in answer yeah, because blood gas ratio is very low, so it is more blood soluble, more water soluble. Now they can test things like that. Cardiovascular effect, it is very easy. Halothane, you know, halothane sensitizes heart to catecholamines. Catecholamines means adrenaline. So adrenaline means it can cause cardiac arrhythmia, it can cause malignant hyperthermia, and it causes hepatitis. So here now we are covering another drug that causes hepatitis. What was first drug that we covered? Verapamil. Last, just last chapter, Verapamil. Okay. So now you see it has low blood gas ratio, so it has a rapid onset and recovery. But what it can cause? Because when you give inspired air, 104% is nitric oxide. So what part will be oxygen? Very low. So it will cause diffusional hypoxia and when it causes diffusional hypoxia it also can cause spontaneous abortion okay hypoxia means i don't know what is mechanism for spontaneous abortion but you have to memorize it so these are classic drugs that they, te they teach you anesthetic for that means uh, nitric oxide has a high mac value but low blood gas it has a low mac value but high blood gas ratio and they want you to know what MAC value indicates MAC value is same as the potency what is blood gas ratio blood gas ratio means how much is soluble in blood how much is in gas form more soluble in blood means it is water soluble it cannot cross blood brain, uh, brain barrier lipid uh, lipid membrane so it will be uh, slower in onset so classic side effect of halothene hepatitis malignant hyperthermia and cardiac arrhythmias especially malignant hyperthermia there are very few drugs that cause malignant hyperthermia one is halothene what drug was causing gingival hyperplasia that we covered last chapter there are two drugs that cause or maybe three drugs one is phenytoin other is cyclosporin one i don't remember cyclosporin we covered later on one other drug also causes gingival hyperplasia but i don't remember just like that there are a few drugs that cause malignant hyperthermia and I think uh, two of them are in this chapter one is halothene other is succinate choline so I already covered this so you know this now let's study drugs so thalpentyl we already know we covered that in barbiturate section midazolam we already know it is short acting okay and is used for induction and it is used for outpatient surgery. What is outpatient surgery? Someone has just some trauma, we need to do stitching. 
uh, for out, out patient. Propofol is used for an induction and maintenance of anesthesia, otherwise it is seen as an cardiac depressant. You know, all anesthetic will be seen as depressant, but what is about cardiac depressant? Can you use it in congestive heart failure? Yes, heart is already weak. So, okay, propofol is like that. And what about halothene? Can you use it in someone who has angina? Yes, it can cause arrhythmia. So these things you need to note, not to not read, but you should also fentanyl, it is an opiate, opiate we will cover later on, opiates can cause res respiratory <laughs> depression. So opiate, it is a, a next chapter, uh, they, they cause respiratory depression. So what are we left with? We are left with only ketamine. Ketamine, remember it is also used for uh, an abuse drug in parties. You must have heard about it. We are in USA. They are highly used. So it causes dissociative anesthesia. What is dissociative anesthesia? Well, if you want to do outpatient surgery in a children, will children allow you? Okay. And on the other hand, you cannot do general anesthesia. General anesthesia means you have to make patients sleep. So in that case, you have to use a dissociative anesthesia. What is now dissociative? Patient psychologically mentally is dissociated. Okay? You will be doing surgery but will not know anything. So when you take this drug, you know this is also abuse drug like cocaine. Why? Because this causes very beautiful hallucination. Okay, I don't know what kind of beautiful hallucination it can cause. But you are hallucinating, you are in heaven. But what if somebody cuts your hand? Will you feel it? No, because you are dissociated from body. Okay? So you are dissociated from body and it is used mostly in children. And what side effect it can have? Hallucination and? And can you use it uh, in heart problems? No. Can you use it in a brain injury? Yeah, it increases intracranial pressure. So you see, mostly they are anesthetic, but small, small things when they take uh, tell you means uh, propofol is both CNS and cardiac depressant. Over here, ketamine is both CVS cardiovascular and CNS stimulant. Got this? These small things they can test you. Fentanyl because it is so opiate, so it causes respiratory. Depression. Okay? So these small small things that can test you. Maybe you don't you just read, don't note these things. Okay. But otherwise this is not the job of general doctor, so they rarely ask these things. But ketamine you need to know because it is also an abuse drug. So emergent and uh, these patients will have otherwise they give you that we gave patient anesthesia, we did surgery. After surgery, now patient is having hallucinations. Which drug they use for anesthesia? Ketamine. Okay. So just like that, any patient has angina or dhimia, you cannot use ketamine. Brain injury, you cannot use ketamine. Okay. In children, you can use this thing. Okay. Now you understand this? All anesthetic, very easy. <coughs> so local anesthetic. So you, now you want to do surgery in the hand, but to just to do stitch in the hand, can you do general surgery? Sometimes you need to do the, for example, you are taking tooth out. To take tooth out, can you do general anesthesia? For general anesthesia, you need to be in, in special setup. So for to do some surgery in a tooth, to do some work on tooth, or to do some stitching in hand, you just you need what? Local anesthetic. But even children, when you do local anesthetic, they will cry a lot. So, in children, what choice you have? Ketamine. Okay, so now you see children. Do children have a CNS problems, stroke, thing like that, or heart problems? No. Okay. So, uh, this channel we will cover in a cardiac section. Still, we are not there. So, mostly, Local anesthetic, they block which channel? Sodium channel.
you know all conduction action potential occurs when sodium goes inside so if you block sodium channels sodium channels are blocked can there be any conduction of pain the nerves will be block nerves will not work so no pain nothing will go to cns one thing how they work remember ionized non ionized to enter inside a cell because you see it works from inside cell it is not working from outside this is local anesthetic these are toxins tetrodoxin puffer fish are red tied okay these are exotic fish toxin they block sodium channel but these work from outside what about local anesthetic they work from outside or from inside they work from inside cell so for them to work first they must enter cell to enter cell they must cross cell membrane so they must be charged or uncharged uncharged so this is uncharged what in the inter cell it becomes what charged now can it leave cell no it becomes trapped and this charged form is so active form what about uncharged form in act you see beautiful use of biochemistry how they made it they made it uncharged and inactive so that it can cross membrane once it enters membrane okay it becomes charged and active and from inside cell it will block sodium channel now you know their action how what is their mechanism what are drugs <laughs> okay all drugs that end with can 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 and Uh, remember from first chapter one was ester other was amide how what was easy way to memorize, memorize that drugs that have one eye they are what ester drugs that has two eye they are amide okay now if someone is allergic to lidocaine can you use bupivacaine no means he is allergic to amides so you cannot use another amide which drug you can use procaine if someone is allergic to cocaine can you use benzocaine this is that is tested okay and esterases are in plasma and blood but uh, amide is uh, metabolized in liver that is small thing will not be tested but this thing is tested if someone is allergic to lidocaine you cannot use cocaine ester amide that one A mechanism I already explained. Nerve fiber sensitive. Which nerves are most sensitive? Which nerves are more active? Smaller nerves or bigger nerves? Remember, misthenia gravis recovered in pathology. Which muscles were more sensitive to blockage of antibodies? smaller because smaller nerves are small muscles are always active you see eye muscles are always active because i need to maintain you know if eye muscles are not active i will have process diplopia so in misthenia gravis eye muscles were affected first so here also smaller diameter and who have more high firing rate they are more sensitive to blockage but the recovery is in reverse order so these b and c a type of nerves are most sensitive means they are blocked first but they recover last okay that will be you know and when you are using a local anesthetic do you want that anesthetic to spread to the body no why because if it is spread to body what if blood so then can in the heart or brain your heart will stop so we want them to be localized do not spread when a drug is spread through which drug through which uh, route it will spread blood vessel you know all drugs spread to the body through blood vessel when you inject a drug what if you use a drug that causes vasoconstriction and keeps local anesthetic at that place what was what is that drug epinephrine so i covered that but i will again repeat it today okay because you see what are their side effects if they spread to the body neurotoxicity and cardiovascular tox toxicity do you want that to happen so mostly they are used with some drug that has alpha 1 agonist what alpha 1 agonist will do it will 
decrease local anesthetic absorption to systemic circulation and it will not spread to brain and heart and plus when it is localized it will have prolonged effect and less toxicity for cocaine do you use need, uh, to need a drug that is alpha 1 agonist remember alpha 1 agonist what it does it vaso constrict because cocaine intrinsically causes vaso constriction so will you use cocaine uh, means alpha 1 agonist with cocaine no cocaine is local anesthetic but it also have alpha 1 agonist activity okay. sometimes they give you uh, someone has a trauma it is macerated the skin is macerated macerated will it be painful will it be bleeding but when the skin is macerated can you do stitching and repair it so now you have to take care of pain you have to take care of bleeding which drug you will use cocaine because cocaine is a local anesthetic it will also cause vasoconstriction that will decrease what bleeding are you understand it okay so doctor can you can see this in user clinic so local anesthetic but it also causes vasoconstriction so with most other uh, drugs you will use a vasoconstrictor but not with cocaine and allergies if someone is allergic to Easter, you will use what drug? Amide. Okay. Any patient who is anesthetic, anesthetized, means he is sleeping. But does it mean that any patient who is sleeping will not move around? When you are sleeping, you are still or you are moving around? Moving around. So we also should use skeletal muscle relaxant. So that should patient should be but if you are doing surgery in the brain and patient suddenly moves you will cut through brain and he will be dead so we want patient to be what? immobile they must have skeletal muscle relaxant have you heard about uh, uh, criminal killed by poisoning what we do first we give them anesthesia they sleep okay then we give them skeletal muscle relaxant Okay, so that they should not move. They are sleeping, but they still can be painful. So then we give them poison. That poison we will still in physiology, potassium chloride. You know, potassium can cause arrhythmia and kill. So now patient will be dead, but he will not feel anything. It is as if he is dying in sleep. Okay, the same way. So, for a scale, neuromuscular junction, which receptors we have? Nicotinic, because they open which channel? Oh, sorry, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine channel when acetylcholine binds to neuromuscular junction. Remember last week, so it will open sodium potassium channels. Now, nicotinic receptor have five subunit and two acetylcholine bind to each alpha subunit. It has two alpha. So to open sodium channel, when sodium channel opens, this causes what? Depolarization. So depolarization means it is used in ICU anesthetic pro so protocols in ICU to afford muscle relaxation and immobility. Anesthesia we know. What about ICU? Some patient is severely traumatized. We want to do some exam or stitching. He is not aligned because of pain he is just moving around. To make him immobile what we can use? Skeletal muscle relaxant. Okay. Now these drugs, how should they act? They should block this. If they block this receptor, can uh, muscle depolarize? If we block this receptor, can muscle depolarize? No. If muscle cannot depolarize, will it contract? No. So patient will be immobile. What we call them? Non-depolarizing. But non depolarizing are competitive. What do you mean by competitive? Last time I covered it. Because non depolarizing, where they bind? They bind here. Okay, as a block channel. If we increase acetylcholine, acetylcholine will push it away and it can be reversed. Remember from uh, last week's paper? So those classic drugs are all drugs that end with the curarine. Remember? Uh, in all. Means uh, in olden days, people used to do hunting in jungle, and they use arrow. 
that arrow has a poison. What type of poison that is? That is curarin. Why? Because when that arrow hits the animal, animal will be immobilized. Okay, because you don't want to use a poison so that when you use that uh, animal's uh, meat, you die yourself. Okay, so it, this is competitive, so this is also reversible. It has no effect on cardiac and smooth muscle, no seen effect. Why? Because acetylcholine receptors are only skeletal muscle. So, uh, drugs uh, normally they don't uh, test individual drugs, you just need to know them as a group. But they can ask a tracurium because it is metabolized to what? Ladenosine. So, ladenosine can cause theory. It is metabolized to ladenosine that can cause seizures and plus it is a safe in hepatic and renal problems. So this is why something is special about it. Safe in hepatic renal impairment plus it is inactivated to ladenosine that can cause seizures. So if we have a non-depolarizing competitor, we must also have other type. What is other type? It must be non depolarizing or depolarizing. It must be competitive or non competitive. Non competitive. That is what is it is succinyl choline. Why we call it depolarizing? Because what is what is half life of uh, uh, neurotransmitters? Seconds for acetylcholine. It comes opens this channel and it is destroyed. But if you use a synthetic acetylcholine, that is succinylcholine, that is succinylcholine, uh, okay, succinylcholine, it will come, okay, open the channel, but will it be depolarized? So ultimately, initially it will be depolarized, ultimately it will become what? Insensitive. What if I teach you for 24 hours continuously? Initially, you understand, but after a few hours, six, seven hours, you will become insensitive. You will not respond, you will not understand anything. Same thing happens here. Depolarizing it has two phases. First phase is because it opens channel, so it causes depolarization, fasciculation, okay. But phase two, what is it? It is a desensitization. Now, receptor will not be receptive, it will not respond. Is it irreversible? No. What side effect it can cause? Malignant hyperthermia. So which two drugs cause malignant hyperthermia that are in this chapter? Halothene. Which two drugs cause liver problems that we covered up till now? Valproic acid and halothene. So it will take you some time to memorize but they are very important. I know at tips. Because I had done a step 1, 2, 3. So these are the same things they ask again and again. And they, you have to practice a lot of questions to remember these things. Okay. So why it, this uh, depolarizing associational choline causes malignant hyperthermia? Remember sometimes when it is very cold you shiver. Why you shiver? To produce heat. So uh, this drug causes what? People are in fasciculation. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, not all patients are equal. Sometimes, it patients too much contraction of muscle. And muscle produce what? Heat. You temp body temperature goes very high, malignant hyperthermia. Why hyperkalemia? When some muscles contract very soon, they can break down. Okay, rhabdomyolysis. And when muscles break down inside the cell, which electrolyte is very high? Potassium. So it can cause hyper rhabdomyolysis means breakdown of muscle. Which uh, one contra I mean, the one side effect is what hyperkalemia. What do you mean by atypical pseudocholine stress? It has a very short duration, but in some people, okay, they have don't have typical pseudocholine stress. They have atypical. It is very Slow acting. If it is very slow acting, will its duration of action be long or short? Long. 
So this, those patients can especially have hyperkalemia and malignant hyperkalemia. And they give you classic history. I mean, so someone comes and he says that someone in my family died during anesthesia. What are what are they talking about? It can be either halothene or succinyl choline. They died because of what? Malignant hyperthermia. You know, some people during anesthesia do die. Okay, that may be malignant hyperthermia. We try to recover it, but some patients do die. Centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant. Remember, some people have a stroke. A stroke means, uh, you know, we have two motor neurons, upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron. So, lower motor neurons are always active. So, they have to be controlled by upper motor neurons. If any stroke, upper motor neurons are gone, what happens to lower motor neurons? They are overactive. So, my patient has spastic and muscles become so spastic, so contracted, they cause pain. In that case, we have to relax them. In that case, you use benzodiapine or some other drug. Because benzodiapine will also cause sedation. So, you will use some other drug. Okay, benzodiapine you can have use chronically. For short term is muscle relaxant in epilepsy, you can use. But for stroke, you can use some drug that will act through GABA B receptor. And there is only one drug that acts on GABA B for your purpose. What is that? Baclofen. What is used? It's pesticide. So, a malignant hyperthermia we have already covered. You know, muscle become rigidity, there is hyperthermia, hypertension, acidosis and hyperkalemia. Because when muscles contract too forcefully, some muscles die and they release potassium. So, what will you use? Which drug you will use? When muscle contract, they for their contraction, what they need? Calcium. What if you block the release of calcium? What if you block the release of calcium? Then will muscle contract? No. So, one use drug is dentroin. What other things you can use? Other support, what do you mean by support? If the patient is too hot, hyperthermia, you will use cooling blanket. Okay, if patient is seizing, you can use diazepam because you have to use a muscle relaxant. That is what support. Plus, you can use dentroline. So, they can give you any type of drug. And two drugs that cause malignant hyperthermia, we studied here. What were those two drugs? Sassinal choline and what is other drugs? Antipsychotic. Okay, but over antipsychotic, we don't call it malignant hyperthermia, we call it neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Same thing, same disease, but we give it a different name. Okay? You see, it is associated with inhaled anesthetic. What is inhaled anesthetic? Halothene. Or skeletal muscle relaxant, what is that? Sassinal choline. Or it is antipsychotic drug, but over there we call it neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is the same thing as malignant hyperthermia, but it is caused by antipsychotic, so we give it a different name. So, dentroline, please remember it. What is the mechanism? It blocks the release of calcium. So, this chapter is also very small. After that, I will cover adrenergic and cholinergic. We still have two hours to go. So, do you have uh, opiate? Does our body has opiate? You know, after exercise, you feel so good. Why? Because after exercise, we have endogenous opiate peptides that are released. These are endorphins, encephalins, and dynorphins. No, why after exercise you feel so good? Because we have endogenous opiates. When sometimes you are uh, very excited in a sympathetic mode, you fight with somebody and they are hitting you. Do you feel the pain? But when you go home, then you feel a lot of pain. I'm hurting here, I'm hurting him, he beat me so much. Why now when you are fighting, you don't feel the pain? 
Some patients even they have bigger accident where they don't feel the pain until they come to the hospital. Why? Because in extreme sympathetic mode you have endogenous opiates released. In uh, exercise also endogenous opiates. They not only and when you have a severe pain trauma, which drug you use? You use opiates. Got this concept? So three receptors are mu, kappa, and but what is the main receptor? Mu. Most important pharmacology is mu. So if they inhibit pain, they should be inhibitory or excitatory. Inhibitory. They should be inhibitory, not excitatory, because they inhibit pain. So mu pharmacology is the most important. Now you have to understand one more thing. Do they decrease pain? No. NSAIDs, analgesic, when we say the analgesic, they decrease pain. But these drugs do not decrease pain. Pain is there. They just increase the pain tolerance and decrease perception and reaction to pain. Pain is there. You don't feel it. You are more tolerant. Okay. And you are less sensitive, perceptive to pain. So please look at these words. Just like benzodiazepine and barbiturate. Benzodiazepine potentiate GABA action and barbiturate prolong it. So NSAIDs decrease pain, but these drugs don't decrease pain. They increase pain tolerance and they decrease pain perception. You have to remember it. And they cause respiratory depression. So whenever someone has because takes an overdose opiate, heroin is also opiate. Okay, morphine is also an opiate, fentanyl also opiate, fentanyl patches. Some patients don't get heroin, so they get fentanyl from clinics. Okay, so respiratory depression. When someone's respiratory system is low, what you give them? Oxygen. But what will happen if you give these patients oxygen? They will die. Why? Because this is when your respiratory system goes down, what happens to carbon dioxide level? Goes up, what happens to oxygen level? Goes down. So high carbon and low oxygen both stimulate respiratory system. But what this drug does, this decreases response to increased carbon dioxide. So whatever little breathing patient is having, that is dependent on water. Because now he cannot respond to high carbon dioxide. So whatever his respiratory system is, respiratory rate is very low. Whatever little respiration is he having, that is dependent on what? Low oxygen. That is driving oxygen, means the respiration. What if you give patient a normalized oxygen? What will happen to respiratory system? It will shut down. So any patient who wants overdose of heroin, morphine, whatever, and his respiratory system is down, will you give them oxygen or naloxone? Naloxone. Now what is naloxone? What is naloxone? It is antidote for morphine. Now antidotes you have to memorize. What is antidote for benzodiazepine? Flumazenil. What is antidote for heroin? Naloxone. Okay, in Dr. Rush, you know, Rush drama series, this, they were talking about it. I mean, someone where he was a big celebrity, he was using fentanyl patches. So he was like an overdose of morphine. Okay, so he, he removed those pent, um, patches and gave that patient naloxone. Okay, they now you see in TV series also. It has minimal effect on heart, but it causes vasodilation. So if it causes vasodilation, it will cause also edema. So can you use them in head trauma? Because brain edema can cause herniation. Remember, from CNS chapter, it can cause herniation. Smooth muscle, longitudinal muscle relaxes and circular muscle constructs. What effect this will have on GI system? 
longitudinal muscles have peristaltic movement. So, will there be any peristaltic movement? No. Circular muscle is a sphincter. What will happen to sphincter? He will close. So, patient will have what? Constipation. And what about cramping? You know, sometimes you have diarrhea. In diarrhea, what happens? Your colon is moving too much. So, you have crampy type of abdominal pain. So, can it be used for diarrhea? Yes, some diarrhea drugs have this because they will decrease peristalsis, they will decrease cause constipation and they will decrease cramping pain. You know, when you have diarrhea, your polar muscles contract too forcefully. You have crampy type of abdominal pain. They will cause constipation, they will also cause urinary retention because circular muscle constrict, longitudinal muscle relax. Circular muscles are what? Sphincter. So, sphincters are closing means you cannot urinate. What will happen to biliary pressure? Because can gallbladder empty itself? Because circular muscles all holes, all doors close. So, biliary pressure will increase. So, can you use this in can you use this in uh, acute cholecystitis? No, because you cannot use morphine acute cholecystitis ex except one drug that I will tell you which drug. Why? Because they will increase biliary pressure, they will cause more pain. And eye muscles we covered last time. Longitudinal radial muscles will relax, but circular muscles will constrict. You know, when circular muscle construct, what it causes in eyes? Meiosis. Okay? So it causes meiosis. Now, if there is an overdose of morphine, what is tried that you will look for? This is a anesthetic, you know, so patient will be seen as depression, coma. Coma, pinpoint pupil, and respiratory depression. Okay? Coma, Pinpoint people, meiosis, respiratory depression. If you see this trial, that patient has an overdose of what? Yes, and Dr. Rush, you know, and in this case, he diagnosed by this. He just can look at the eyes, pinpoint people, respiratory rate is low, and he's in coma. He said it is morphine overdose. But where is morphine? He removed his clothes. There are fentanyl patches. He removed those patches and gave patient to what? Naloxone. So easy to. Now you know what it will cause kind of constipation, urinary retention, and uh, uh, pinpoint people because longitudinal muscle relax and circular muscle constrict. It is also cuff suppressant. Okay, independent. That job is independent of analgesia and respiratory, respiratory depression. So more most commonly, you know, cancer patient. Sometimes their cancer metastasizes to bones and they have severe pain. And in that severe pain, which drug you use? Morphine. You cannot use simple analgesic. But it has cuff suppressants. If you see some cuff drugs, they will have dextromethorphan, uh, something like that. That is also morphine class. That job is independent of analgesia and respiratory depression. So it causes nausea and vomiting. It also increases the stomach. So, it is it a good use, good drug to treat nausea and vomiting? No. It causes. And which two drugs were metabolized by glucourinidation? One was morphine, other was chloramphenicol. Remember? Remember? From chapter morphine and chloramphenicol. And these same drugs will undergo enterohepatic circulation. I covered last time. Morphine, glucose, other is what? Chlorophonicol. Anything that is glucourinated, that it goes into hepatic circulation. Means from through bile, it will go to colon, uh, small intestine, and it will be reabsorbed. Enterohepatic hepatic circulation. And you have to be very cautious in renal dysfunction. Why? Because some of it is also. Look, anything that undergoes enterohepatic circulation. First, it is glucourinated. 
glucose will now it will go to small intestine small intestine from small intestine it will blood again into the blood again when it enters blood again how does it get uh, gotten rid of through kidneys you know when you do not urinate for some time your urine looks yellow what is that yellow thing bilirubin why because bilirubin is conjugated it is undergo the entire hepatic circulation after that it is again released by kidney some if someone has kidney problem now you are using morphine if too much morphine it can cause respiratory depression and death so you have to be very cautious in renal dysfunction and here there is some table where is that okay that is coming to the end so first let's study full agonist okay Mep mepridin mepridin does mepridin cause meiosis why it doesn't cause meiosis but it cause tachycardia and no spasm in gi u g blood group because it has anti muscarinic anti muscarinic is cholinergic factor so means in acute cholecystic cholecystitis which drug you can use for pain mepridin because there is no effect on colon gi system gu system and gall bladder okay but other drugs can you use in cholecystitis no and plus does it cause uh, meiosis no because it is anti muscarinic anti muscarinic drug what is anti muscarinic i covered last time remember anti muscarinic drug they will cause meiosis or midriasis midriasis remember okay if you go and revise this chapter and this also has anti muscarinic uh, and it is metabolized p450 system to what normepridin normepridin is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor so means and this can cause serotonin syndrome that i will cover in future chapters because it will cause serotonin it will inhibit serotonin reuptake there will be too much serotonin in the body and this can cause what serotonin syndrome that we i will cover in depression chapter methadone you have a, have you heard about it it is used in maintenance of opiate addict okay uh, i will explain later on how it is used codeine have you heard about it it is used as cough suppressant analgesia you know most cough drugs if you see they have little bit codeine it is an analgesia but is used in combination with another ansaids so you know what are the and then mixed agonist antagonist means at some receptor they are agonist at other receptor they are antagonist at mu receptor what are they antagonist so it can precipitate what withdrawal what if someone is a heroin addict and you give them this drug i have no problem because i am not a heroin addict so i will have no withdrawal symptom you see withdrawal symptoms only in addicts what if someone is coming he is a heroin addict and morphine addict and you give them nalbuprofen or pentazosin this will block more uh, receptor activity you will create withdrawal symptoms now these are drugs that you need to know then what are antagonists naloxone naltrexone and methylene if there is a overdose of morphine or heroin which drug you use what is antidote naloxone and what is the naltrexone naloxone is used iv but naltrexone is used orally and decreases craving in alcohol and opiate addiction you know so not only opiate but alcohol if someone is addicted to alcohol now he is craving for alcohol he craves for it so you can use naltrexone can you use naloxone for that naloxone is only for acute toxicity acute overdose okay naltrexone is for not for acute use it is only to decrease craving look at these words 
methyl naltrexone treatment of opioid induced constipation because does not cross blood brain barrier and won't precipitate withdrawal if someone you know someone using too much opiate but what opiate is causing it? constipation and some people have severe constipation is constipation good no in that case you need some antidote what is that antidote why we use this because this will not cross blood brain barrier if you use some other drug that can cross blood brain barrier and precipitate what withdrawal symptom so it will treat only constipation so you need to know these three, three drugs antagonists if there is a severe toxicity what will be three things i already told you when point people respiratory depression and coma and if there is acute toxicity what drugs you will do iv naloxone and again you know whenever there is there is some drug of abuse what is sequence first you become tolerant then you become physically and psychologically dependent once you become physically dependent now your body not only mind but your also body needs that if you don't get that drug what will happen withdrawal symptoms so i told you alcohol withdrawal can kill you what about heroin withdrawal can it kill no heroin withdrawal cannot kill you see alcohol withdrawal is very bad it can kill you because you have life threatening fears it can kill you heroin withdrawal cannot kill you but it will do very very bad things what is the worst thing that it can do it was making you you know it was making you what pain tolerant perception it was decreasing perception now when you suddenly stop heroin because morphine you are not getting what will happen but is there any pain no pain it is cns originating there is no pain just your brain is creating it there is no pain but because now you suddenly stop so your body became more perceptive your brain is thinking that there is pain everywhere and that cns originating pain will be so severe he can means he will do anything to get heroin maybe steal maybe kill so is a heroin withdrawal life threatening but it is bad because of cns originating pain and what other things you will see yawning lacrimation rhinorrhea salivation anxiety sweating and diarrhea especially when i see lacrimation yawning and uh, some kind of pain sweating i see what is that heroin okay so so you should be able to diagnose acute toxicity but also heroin withdrawal symptoms what are withdrawal symptoms yawning is classical whenever i see in which other drug overdose you can see lacrimation rhinorrhea salivation sweating and spasm or muscle cramps which other drug that we cover uh, i think we cover the last time no, we did not cover it is a uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor remember organophosphate insecticide poisoning dumbbell if we have time we cover it today or next time so but then what is different here only different thing is what yawning and cns originating pain otherwise everything is same but yawning and cns originating pain that is all opiate related drugs that have specific indication one is lopramide that is used for what diarrhea other dextromethorphan that is used for cough and codeine codeine is also used for what okay and what is management of withdrawal if someone has withdrawal symptoms will you give patient heroin no you have to support uh, clonidine clonidine is in a cholinergic chapter uh, adrenergic chapter then why we are giving methadone methadone is also from heroin methadone is that we call smooth tap, uh, tapering 
it has a very hang, long half life maybe 48 hours 48 hours how many days 2 3 days so you give one drug now means one dose now for 2 3 days will he have symptoms so now for 3 days is he receiving any drug is he feeling anything no then what I will do, it will take not just one or two days, six months or one year. I will slowly type per methadone. Okay? Because now I am giving him one dose, but after three dose, means I will keep that dose for maybe three, four weeks. After three, four weeks, I will come from 60 mg to 40 mg or 50 mg. Again, after two months, I will come to. So slowly, slowly, after one year, I can stop it and patient can get rid of that addiction. Now you understand it? Why we are using methadone? Because it has a long half life and we can slowly pepper it. But this is possible only in some specific addict hospital. There are uh, hospitals in USA for that. Every, it must be in every country. Okay? And this is also very important. All control indications and crashes for opioid head injuries it causes vasodilation so can you use them because it will increase intracranial pressure it causes in any kind of pulmonary dysfunction because it causes respiratory depression so can you use it but in one pulmonary problem you can use it what is that pulmonary edema we use it if patient has severe pulmonary edema what is treatment Pulmonary edema means lungs are full of water. So you will use a diuretic to get rid of water. That is loop diuretic. Okay. Uh, pulmonary the treatment you can write. It. Loop diuretic. Also, if lungs are full of water, patient will have difficulty breathing and oxygen problem. So you will give patient oxygen. Okay. What, uh, what other thing you can use? Is dyspnea type of pain, you know dyspnea, difficulty breathing is a kind of pain, bad feeling. In dyspnea, which drug you will use? I mean, this is a kind of pain. So, when patient has difficulty breathing, this patient becomes anxious. So, to because dyspnea is a special type of pain, it's a type of pain. So, which drug we will use here? And patient has severe dyspnea, in severe pain, in kind of severe pain, which drug we use? Morphine. So that is management of pulmonary edema, oxygen, loop diuretic and morphine. So in other pulmonary problems, can you use morphine? No. Okay. So what about a hepatic and renal dysfunction? You know where it is conjugated? Liver. After conjugation, it undergoes enterohepatic circulation and where it gets excreted through kidney. So in both cases, also you avoid it in adrenal and thyroid deficiencies because you have exaggerated repose, it is avoid it is avoided. What about pregnancy? You cannot because it will cause neonatal depression or dependence. In a you know sometimes a heroin addict females because uh, they sell their body for heroin and they get pregnant and when their baby, babies are born babies are dependent on what their babies are also heroin addict because through uterus baby gets it and except if someone is pregnant and you have to that baby will become dependent if mother is a heroin addict what if during pregnancy patient has severe pain I use only once then it can still cause neonatal depression but during pregnancy you can use one drug what is that mepridine in cholecystitis you can also use one heroin morphine drug what is that mepridine ok in all pulmonary cases you will never use morphine except one what is that ok got it is very easy now these is this too much a deep? We still can study for one hour and we stop at 9 p.m. Okay, is this too much deep that we are teaching you? We are very super. But at least you do, as a doctor you should know what is morphine, what are the uses, what are contraindications. 
How will I diagnose overdose? How will I will diagnose withdrawal? The how I will treat overdose? Give naloxone. How I will treat uh, um, addict addiction? Supporter methadone and clonidine. Okay. So these things you should know. Means this is A B C. So I think we can have ten minutes break after that. Okay. We can do one more chapter. If I don't have time, we can cover one chapter and the other chapter. Then I can cover next time. Okay. And once I finish adrenergic and cholinergic chapter, then I will teach cardiovascular. And before I teach cardiovascular, you should know cholinergic, adrenergic, and autonomic nervous system. We are here to study for three hours, but we are still feel too tired. But what if we study for seven hours continuously? That was not a wise idea. Okay, so I am started from uh, slide number nineteen, adrenergic pharmacology. Okay, cholinergic maybe I do next time. Do you have energy to go for one and a half or two hours more, or one hour is okay? Ah, okay, okay. So one hour is okay. 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 So next time I will um, maybe instead of if we do little less now and we can have three hours one more class. Okay, so it will be more convenient. We have this already covered. Remember when I my it was my I think my first lecture. But at that time, I was not so confident, and you were also new. So we have some, and this is very one of the very important. Adrenergic pharmacology. It is sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic. Cholinergic is para sympathetic. So first, you should know how adrenaline is made. You see, it is made from tyrosine. Tyrosine hydroxylase. It is called dopa. From dopa, dopamine. From dopamine, what you get? Noradrenaline. But do you need to know all these enzymes? No, because I already told you that anything that has a role in diagnosis, pharmacology, management, you need to know. But these enzymes have no such big role. So why you need to know these? Okay. So means you just need to know that tyrosine makes noradrenaline. Once it is made, it is stored in vesicles. Now, why it should be stored in vesicles? Because otherwise it will be destroyed by which enzyme? Mau. Okay. So you see, once it is stored, when there is action potential, it is released. After released, on which receptor it acts? Alpha and beta. Remember from last lecture, what are receptors for? Ep means adrenaline, or epinephrine, or norepinephrine. They were alpha and beta. These are receptors for sympathetic system. So after it means it is a neurotransmitter. It has to work quickly. After working quickly, it is either metabolized by CMT or recycled, reuptaken, recycled. When it is recycled, it is in mobile pool. In mobile pool, either it is destroyed or it is stored. So that means now you also have alpha two receptor. What is job alpha two receptor? It is like a negative feedback feedback effect. When alpha two receptors are stimulated, they block. You see, it is negative sign. Release of norepinephrine. So why you need to know about this figure? Because there are drugs that work here. You see. What is methyl p tyrosine at position one? That belongs tyrosine hydroxylase, but this is no longer used. This is was used in olden days in research. So at position one, we have a drug, but we no longer use it. But MEO are very good drugs. What will you have if you block MEO? Will you be able to metabolize norepinephrine? Not then. There's too much norepinephrine. Means what will happen to sympathetic system? Stimulated. When you are in sympathetic mode, you are in depression or stimulated. You are stimulated. So, MO inhibitors are used for as uh, these are anti-depressors and uh, releasers. What is, will be their job? They will release norepinephrine from mobile pool. 
they also will stimulate uh, means the sympathetic system so, so reuptake blockers they will block reuptake of norepinephrine if you block the reuptake of norepinephrine what will happen to norepinephrine over here it will increase so sympathetic system will be increased alpha 2 agonist and antagonist at means it, the, over here we alpha uh, receive I mean, receive drugs and over here beta drugs and what is job of reserpin means at position 8 at position 5 alpha drugs at position 8 we have beta drugs what is what is reserpin position 6 if you use reserpin what it will do to these vesicles destroy if these vesicles are destroyed is there in norepinephrine but other neurotransmitters such as serotonin and are they are also stored in these vesicles so if these vesicles are gone mean norepinephrine is gone serotonin is gone so what patient will feel severe depression so reserpine is no longer used because of which side effect so much depression so some patient even committed suicide okay gonathedine is also old drug that is reuptake blocker but no longer used and agonist and blockers of alpha 1 and beta 1 receptors that is position 8 now you see which drugs at position 1 6 and 7 are we using these drugs nowadays they are gone like black and white tv we no longer use them so which drugs are a direct actors? Yes, that directly going to stimulate alpha and beta. Other drugs are indirect. What are other drugs indirect? Two, three, four. All these drugs are what? Indirect actors. So if you means if you stimulate alpha two agonist to antagonist, what will happen? No epinephrine release. It will go down. So this is very important figure that we need to know. This is all explanation I, that I just explained. Now you have to understand. <coughs> okay, this table is very important. And once you know, uh, we covered the sympathetic system last time. So we know what whenever there is a smooth muscle, what your receptors act alpha one, and they will cause smooth muscle contraction or uh, contraction. So and eyes when you are sympathetic mode what you have meiosis or mediosis in sympathetic mode you have meiosis when you are fighting your eyes need more light or less light so you have mediosis so alpha 1 will stimulate radial smooth muscles it will cause mediosis when you are sympathetic mode what happens to your blood pressure in increases so tpr that will come later on let's go very quickly it will cause vasoconstriction arterioles and veins when you are sympathetic mode okay do you want to pee yeah if you want if you are save, uh, running to save your life from a terrorist you stop and try to pee you will die so should you should have urinary retention okay so you see blood trigonal sphincter they will contract you will have urinary retention you will also have fecal retention and sex is something different mostly either you are sympathetic mode more active or parasympathetic but with sex you have both sympathetic and parasympathetic active why because for ejaculation smooth muscle must contract peristaltic movement for smooth muscle contraction peristaltic movement you need which system sympathetic ejaculation is job of sympathetic system okay but what about erection for erection blood vessels should dilate sympathetic system dilates or vasoconstricts blood vessels so for erection what you need sympathetic or parasympathetic parasympathetic so erection is job of parasympathetic okay and ejaculation what you call it climax that is job of the system Sympathetic, you know. So when you are sympathetic mode, you need more glucose or less glucose. So what should happen to glycogen? It should be broken down. And kidney, 
remain it decrease the rein i will explain this later on alpha 2 alpha 2 platelet aggregation and uh, norepinephrine decrease that is not much important but pancreas decrease insulin so kidney decreases renin and in pancreas insu decrease insulin i will explain first uh, let me explain this thing where you have beta 1 receptors in only two organs what are two organs heart and kidney remember from last lecture what was sympathetic system doing to the heart increasing heart rate increasing conduction increasing force of force of contraction you see conduction force of contraction and heart rate but parasympathetic mode it was controlled only heart rate so beta 1 receptor you find only in where in the heart av node atrial ventricular muscle perfusion system where else you find beta 1 receptors and what it releases renin now do you see any contraindication here beta 1 increases the renin release and alpha 1 decreases it is same sympathetic system but one increases other decreases why because look uh, which receptors are more sensitive beta or alpha that is no slide beta so initially when you are sympathetic mode you want your heart rate to increase you want your blood pressure to increase so heart rate increases blood pressure increases by what renin when when you you are still more stimulated your blood pressure should increase even more then after beta which receptor will be activated alpha 1 so means now your blood pressure will go shooting up if blood pressure goes too high what will happen to you you will die so there should be safety valve what is that safety valve alpha 1 because at the same time it will cause vasoconstriction and increase blood pressure but at the same time it will control so that blood pressure should not go very high so it will decrease renin now you see any contraindication in this system all this is to keep the system within a range balanced your blood pressure should increase your heart rate should increase but blood pressure should not go sky high should not skyrocket because otherwise you will be dead now you understand this okay so mostly where are alpha 1 receptors in all smooth muscle okay and where are beta 1 receptors only in heart but alpha 1 and beta 1 you also see one other organ kidney beta 1 increases renin release and alpha 1 decreases why they have to keep blood pressure within a range got this now where are beta 2 receptors all other organs that you can think of blood vessel uterus bronchioles skeletal muscle liver pancreas you see in a skeletal muscle liver what it does increases glycogenolysis why yeah when you are fighting flight mode you need what glucose so it is beta 2 because beta 1 are only in mostly in heart so you need glucose but to need glucose to be able to use glucose you need what insulin so beta 2 also increases insulin secretion but are glycogen stores unlimited not unlimited so means the glycogen goes up insulin goes up but after some time glycogen is depleted now glucose is going down then what you should do to insulin we have to stop it and who will stop insulin secretion if beta 1 is increasing then what is alpha 2 is doing because if we don't stop you see beta 2 receptors are more sensitive they are activated first when we are sympathetic mode for too long we should stop insulin at some point because if we don't stop insulin what will happen hypoglycemia and patient can die 
okay now you want to see is, is this a contraindication in this when you are in fight and flight mode what happens to uh, you need more oxygen or less oxygen so you bronchial should dilate or constrict dilate what about uterus you know sometimes all pregnant females are maybe they reach some accident maybe they are angry they have a fight with their husband okay so in that means in that pregnant female is in which mode sympathetic so what should happen to uh, uterus relax why what if it contracts baby will be lost and baby is the future of human race so nature wants human race to be safe means what kind of trauma is there what kind of accident what kind of fight with husband baby is safe why because uterus relaxes now in this one system in how many ways nature is trying to save humanity or human race what are those there is a safety valve so that your blood pressure doesn't go too high renin is going down there is a safety valve so that there should insulin should not go too high and you should not develop hypo glycemia and there is a safety valve you know see for uh, your baby to be safe in the womb and blood vessels beta 2 they all cause vaso dilation the alpha 1 cause vaso constriction then beta 2 cause vaso dilation why again blood pressure should not shoot very high now you understand this figure first you understand this table first you need to understand what sympathetic system does if you know sympathetic system then this is very easy where alpha 1 receptor where alpha 2 receptor where beta 1 receptor where beta 2 receptor now you see one thing here are beta 2 receptors innervated not innervated not innervated so beta 2 receptors will be activated by epinephrine or norepinephrine last lecture norepinephrine was neurotransmitter so it will activate only in receptors that are innervated but these receptors are not innervated means they will be activated by which epinephrine because epinephrine was a hormone so it was in blood got this so an other is d1 receptor where are they renal mesenteric and coronary vasculature why you need to know this because you know when the patient is in shock and uh, there's very little blood in body where that blood should go what is the most important organ to save brain what have will happen to blood supply to kidney heart it will stop because you see if you should see any shock patient is hands will be cold clammy why we are when you shock going to die due is it important to save hand or brain when so arteries are veins in hand will vasoconstrict at the same time vessels in colon because you don't need to digest heart and kidney will stop okay your brain will survive but without a colon kidney and heart will you survive so what we do sometimes we need to increase blood supply to these important organs because if we want the patient to survive these organs are very important in that case which drug we can use we use a drug that will cause vasodilation and de- activate d1 receptors and cause vasodilation these receptors and these organs and that drug is what remember dopamine but will you use an excessive dose of dopamine or uh, just a small dose why because if you increase doses which receptors will be activated alpha 1 you see increasing doses then what will happen when you stimulate alpha receptor now it will cause vasodilation or vasoconstriction so now you are going to kill patient so sometimes you know nurses or doctors who don't have enough knowledge they say patient is going to die so we try to need to give as much dopamine as possible but is it okay no never medicine is science but is also art 
Art means when you will use, how much dose you will use. Too much dose can kill patient. Then now this was beta receptors are more sensitive to activators than alpha receptors. We already know this thing. At low doses, which receptors will be predominant? At high doses, which receptors will be predominant? Alpha. So high doses you have to avoid. Now you understand this figure on this concept, this table. Okay, you have to understand alpha one receptor, alpha two, beta one and beta two. Now we use drugs that will directly act on alpha receptor. Any drug that directly acts on alpha receptor is what it will cause vasoconstriction. When it causes vasoconstriction, what happens to TPR and BP? And when blood pressure in increases, remember from last lecture, by reflex, what it will cause? So you see, these spacings are become wider. So they can give you tracings like that. Is there any change in pulse pressure? Well, pulse pressure is job of beta 2. So not job alpha 1. Okay. <coughs> Systemically, it will increase blood pressure via vasoconstriction. And by reflex, it can cause bradycardia. Okay. Cardiac output may be down, but it is offset by venous return, so it has no change in cardiac output. So forget about it. What are drugs that we can use? Methoxamine is no longer used. It is an old black and white TV. Because sometimes patients have tachycardia, arrhythmia. So what drugs in olden days we used to give methoxamine? methoxamine. Why? Where it will cause vasoconstriction by reflex, it will slow heart. So was methoxamine directly causing decreasing heart rate? It was indirect drug. Nowadays we will cover it in Arduino chapter. We have drugs that act directly. So we use now better drugs. Then what are methylphenylphenine used for? Remember when you have a cold, your nose is running, asthma. Why your nose is running? Because blood vessels dilate and they become leaky. Now you want, if they become dilated, leaky, what you, you should do to blood vessels? You cause vaso chemistry. For that, what you set you will stimulate alpha 1. Okay? That, that one will be nasal decongestant. If you see one other drug that is not written here, xylometazolin. Have you heard about it? If you have ever used the nasal decongestant, xylo, x a l o. N E T metazolone something like that. If you go xylo metazolone, zolone or zolin, I don't remember. That is then that is also the nasal decongestant. Then what will be its mechanism? Alpha one because it must cause the constriction. Another use if you remember from last time ophthalmologic use what will be? If you stimulate sympathetic system, you will have cycloplegia or just midrasis without cycloplegia. Midrasis without cycloplegia. If midrasis with cycloplegia, what will be that drug? Muscarinic antagonist. Last time. Okay. I think we don't review that. Okay. Muscarinic antagonist. M antagonist. Remember? So sometimes, you know, doctors just want to cause midrasis but no cycloplegia. Then they use alpha one agonist. Alpha two agonist. One is clonidin, other is methyl dopa. Clonidin we already covered just now. It was used in, in which system? Heroin or morphine addict supporter system. Because when patients don't get, get heroin, their heroin, their sympathetic system becomes activated. Their blood pressure goes high. So we have to block their, uh, means the, uh, Sympathetic system. So we one drug we will use colonidin, others methyl dopa. Methyl dopa is a drug of choice to treat hypertension in pregnancy. It is drug of choice to treat hypertension in pregnancy. Do you have an audio of that first lecture I took? Our video? I already covered this. So this is just review. So I will try to go faster. If you want to study detail, you can go, go, go back and watch it. Okay, but this is very important because before I cover, without this I cannot cover cardiovascular system. What will beta agonist will do? 
if you stimulate beta 1 receptor what it will cause beta 1 receptor where they were heart rate will increase heart rate stroke volume because force of contraction cardiac output but it will also increase pulse pressure i told you pulse pressure is job of beta receptor not alpha receptor heart rate will increase but beta 2 will also at the same time cause what vasodilation so what will happen to tpr and blood pressure you see blood pressure and tpr decreasing but heart rate is increasing cardiac output stroke volume is increasing so pulse pressure is increasing got this you see pulse pressure is different between systolic and diastolic so systemically they will increase blood uh, sorry uh, increase heart rate and decrease blood pressure so what are drugs that we can use iso means equal so isoprotonol equally activates beta 1 and beta 2 so what are its uses nowadays nowadays we became more specific so we will use a drug that will activate either beta 1 or beta 2 okay so you see in congestive heart failure heart is very weak so you want to give a push to the heart so which receptor you want to stimulate so why don't you use w to me why use isoprotonol it has some use in emergencies but not that much and in asthma in asthma what you have bronco so you want to cause bronchodilation which receptors you want to stimulate in uh, uh, in bronchi which receptors you have beta 2 so you why don't use salmitrol albutrol trabutulin you know sometimes a uh, patient is going to have premature labor and baby will be premature so you want to delay that labor or delivery which receptors you will stimulate beta 2 okay again nitrodrin because beta 1 receptors are only in heart and which one other organ kidney everywhere else which receptors you have beta 2 metabolism glycogenolysis lipolysis you have beta 2 so beta 2 is associated with metabolism are you understand this so what are uses of dopamine what are uses of salmitrol albutrol isoprotonol do we have uses it now for, for bronchospasm which drug you will prefer beta 2 for heart block or bradycardia which drug you will use dobutamine so anyway when they ask side effect what will be there if you, you give um, isoprotonol they can cause angina and arrhythmia and flushing why angina and arrhythmia because you are stimulating with your receptor why flushing but you are stimulating with your receptor beta 2 because if you stimulate beta receptors blood vessels will vasodilate and you will get more blood so you will have flushing so norepinephrine norepinephrine was a transmitter or neurotransmitter or oh, it was a hormone or neurotransmitter so it will in, means activate receptors that are innervated and which receptors was not inner, innervated if you go to the first table which receptor was not innervated beta 2 so here you see in 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 norepinephrine you see alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 do you see beta 2 here it has no effect on beta 2 so when you see this at this point we give norepinephrine so it will stimulate alpha receptor blood pressure will go up it will stimulate beta 1 receptor initially heart rate will go up but later on when blood pressure goes up by reflex it can cause what bradycardia so you know understand all this figure this is very i already told you any figure like this in kaplan book it is very important now you see epinephrine epinephrine will activate every receptor alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 so low dose epinephrine at low dose which receptors are active which receptors are more sensitive See at low dose you see only beta activity. Do you see an alpha activity? So medium dose is not tested, but a high dose is tested. If you see epinephrine uh, tracings and then you see high dose epinephrine, it is exactly the same. Because at a high dose, which receptors are more active? Alpha, beta 1. 
Then what about beta 2 receptor at high dose? Where are they in this figure? Because at high receptor at high dose, which receptor will be predominant? Alpha 1. What about beta 2? They are masked or hidden. They are there activated, but they are masked or hidden. Then if you want to see this is can you tell me from this tracing whether it is epinephrine or not epinephrine? Because they look exactly similar. How, okay, you cannot tell this from this figure. How will you find out then? What will happen if I block this alpha receptor? Now you are masking which receptors? Unmasking which receptors? So now patient will have hypertension or hypotension. If you block alpha receptors, you are left with only beta 1 and beta 2. When you are only beta 1 and beta 2, you will have thing like that. Then from hypertension, patient will go into what? Hypotension. And this is tested. We call it epinephrine reversal. When sometimes, you know, sometimes you give too much dose of epinephrine. Now you know, now you need to reverse it. They are now, it is increasing blood pressure. How will you reverse it? You will give a, a, which is a drug? Alpha blocker. Okay. So, alpha 1 job will, you know, what are beta 2 specific effect? It will dilate bronchioles, it will dilate uterus, it will dilate blood vessels. And beta 2 was also associated with the metabolism. It will increase glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, and mobilization, lipolysis. So all glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipo, uh, lipolysis, mobilization and the use of fat. What we call this? We simply call it metabolism. So see, beta 1 are only in heart. Everywhere else, what kind of receptors we have? Beta 2. Now how will you differentiate high dose of epinephrine versus norepinephrine? Which receptors you will block? Alpha 1. Then it will go from hypertension to hypotension. Hypertension was due to predominant alpha 1 tone and hypotension was pre unmasking of beta 2 receptors. So use of norepinephrine and epinephrine. For asthma, which receptors you want to stimulate? Beta 2. So will you use epinephrine or albutrol? Albutrol. So means pharmacologically you can use epinephrine, but which drug you will prefer? Beta 2 stimulator, that is albutrol. For hypotension, you can use epinephrine. Because hypo, it will cause vasoconstriction and increase blood pressure. But in reality, for hypotension, what we use? No, we use IV fluid. Then your blood pressure goes down. Okay? Theoretically, but it is better to produce it. Okay? We have what if patient dehydrated already because of diarrhea, vomiting? Then you need to give IV fluid. So, okay? Adjunct to local anesthetic. You remember? We covered just local anesthetic because we have to cause vasoconstriction. Otherwise, local anesthetic will spread to body and shut down your heart and brain. So, which drug you can use? Epinephrine. But with cocaine, will you use epinephrine? No, because cocaine intrinsically has vasoconstricting activity. For cardiac arrest, which drug you will prefer? Which drug ha has longer activity? Epinephrine. Because norepinephrine has very short half-life. So you know sometimes uh, if you have seen movies sometimes heart is not working they give injection here and heart what that injection contains okay, why because epinephrine has beta one activity okay you now now need to stimulate beta one receptor but which drug will stimulate beta one receptor quickly dobutamine or epinephrine that is epinephrine. Dobutamine will work slowly. This is an emergency. Okay. For anaphylaxis, best drug is only epinephrine. Drug of choice, life saving. What is anaphylaxis shock? When you are allergic to B sting and B stings you, 
you are asking by B, or you are allergic to penicillin, someone gives you penicillin injection. In that anaphylaxis that you used to be immunology, what happens? Your blood vessels dilate all over body. So if all over body blood vessels dilate, it will cause shock. At the same time, you have bronchoconstriction, reason you cannot breathe. Now you need to do two things. You need to cause vasoconstriction, stimulate alpha 1 receptor. You need to cause bronchodilation. There is only one drug that can do that. What is that? They are epinephrine by stimulating beta 2 receptor. Can you use albutrol here? No, albutrol will cause bronchodilation, but it will not treat shock. So you have two things to treat. For asthma, prefer drug that is albutrol. For shock, use it. Um, anaphylaxis, use a drug. You can only use one thing that is epinephrine only. Hypotension, you use IV flood first. Loc adjunct to local anesthetic, it is mostly epinephrine used. Cardiac arrest, you can use not epinephrine, epinephrine, but mostly it is epinephrine. For asthma, why they are writing epinephrine? They are for asthma, you need to cause bronchodilation. What is that drug? That drug is what? Beta 2. But does not epinephrine have beta 2 activity? No, because not epinephrine is neurotransmitter. It activates the receptors that are only innervated. So now indirect acting, those were direct acting. Indirect acting, what were drugs? Releasers. What was, how do, were releasers acting? You know the first figure in this chapter? The releasers were displacing norepinephrine from mobile pool. So what interaction they will have with MO inhibitor? What was job of MO in Zang? It was breaking down norepinephrine. If you use the MO inhibitor, will you break down norepinephrine in mobile pool? In the mobile pool, there will be too much norepinephrine. At the same time, if you give a releaser, what it will do? It will release all that norepinephrine from mobile pool. And what will happen to your blood pressure? Shoot up. And patient can die. And one example is MOO inhibitor. What was he used? Depression. You know, MOO inhibitor because it blocks. Uh, um, if you use MOO inhibitor, will you be able to metabolize norepinephrine? Norepinephrine will increase. When norepinephrine increases, what happens to the sympathetic system? So, sympathetic system is similar. You know, depression, depression patient. Sympathetic system is low, so we need to in increase sympathetic system. Now, if you use MU inhibitor, means sympathetic system, everything looks bright. Previously, everything was dark, hopeless. Now, everything looks bright. When you give someone a MU inhibitor, now he is out of depression, what is the first thing they will do? Go enjoy with their girlfriend, go to a party. In a party in USA, what they drink? Pizza, pizza has cheese and red wine. And red wine has what? Tyranny. Not white wine, but red wine. So normally, when you eat, drink red wine or eat cheese, that has tyranny. But does that tyranny reach our blood? No. Why? Because that tyranny is metabolized by AMO in gut and liver. Otherwise, if there is no MO in gut and liver, what would happen? Every time we uh, drink red wine and cheese, our blood pressure goes very high. So, then will you be able to eat pizza? Pizza business will go down. So, what nature did, nature gave us MO in gut and liver. But now that patient is using MO inhibitor. Now, will that tyramine be metabolized by MO in gut and liver? What will happen to that tyramine? It will reach our body. In our body, there is already too much norepinephrine because that patient is using what? MO inhibitor. Now, what will happen to that norepinephrine? All of that norepinephrine, because tyramine is a releaser, will come out of, come out, what will happen to blood pressure? 
it will shoot up. So whenever you are giving someone any one of the what counseling will be, you give to him. Please don't drink red wine and don't eat cheese. Don't use cheese. Don't eat pizza, something that has cheese. Okay? If you don't, what will happen to them? And this is highly tested, hypertensive crisis, drug interaction. So tyramine is a releaser, amyo inhibitor. Okay? Amphetamine. It is used in ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactive disease, narcolepsy. You know what is narcolepsy is? Do you know what it is? I am teaching you. Suddenly I am snoring, sleeping and snoring. You are walking on the road and you suddenly fall asleep. Okay? Narco means dead, lepsy means sleep. Is it good? Okay? <laughs> so, it's very bad. So, you are driving, suddenly you fall asleep on your wheel. So, in that case, you need to stimulate your brain. And ADHD, I will explain why it is ADHD using behavioral science. So, in that, you need to use it as a stimulant because it will centrally release serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, all hormones. So, amphetamine is a releaser. Ephedrine is also a releaser. Ephedrine is used in cold medication. But ephedrine is tightly regulated. Amphetamine is a tightly. Uh, what amphetamine uh, it is called in USA? Uh, have you seen that uh, Breaking Bad? What they producing? Methamphetamine. That is a type of amphetamine. Why? Because these are psychostimulants, and all psychostimulants can be added. Ephedrine is also very tightly regulated. Why it is used in cold medication? Because it will cause release of norepinephrine that will cause vasoconstriction. Then why ephedrine is also tightly regulated? Because it is a drug of abuse like heroin. You know sometimes they dilute heroin. It is pure, they dilute because as it goes into market, dilute, they will get more money for it. And what thing they can use to dilute it? Ephedrine. So, just like cocaine, remember why cocaine is a drug of abuse? Because it is a reuptake inhibitor. It, re re it inhibits reuptake of what? Every neurotransmitter, not only norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. And any drugs that increase dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin level, they can be used as a drug of abuse. That can be amphetamine, ephedrine, and cocaine, even tricyclic antidepressant. MAO means all they stimulate means your brain. MAO type A, MAO type B. MAO type B is only in brain that metabolizes dopamine. MAO type A is everywhere, mainly in liver, but anywhere it metabolizes norepinephrine, serotonin, and tyramine. And the indirect acting, oh, this is not that important. So, now last two topics. I can't cover it in 20 minutes. So, can you tolerate me for 20 minutes more? Okay. I already covered it. This is just review. Yeah, before I start cardiovascular, you must know this chapter. So, otherwise, I can't cover that. So, alpha receptors. What alpha receptors do? They cause vasoconstriction. So, as they cause vasoconstriction, means they no alpha receptor blockers if you block alpha receptors what will happen vasodilation what will happen to blood pressure when you have blood pressure goes down what it will cause reflex tachycardia and will will kidneys get enough blood so kidney will secrete what renin and angiotensin system so what will happen salt and water tension so, alpha, any drug that causes vasodilation decreases PCR, it will have two side effects. Not only alpha blocker, but when we cover antihypertensive drugs. So, what are those two side effects that we need to memorize it for every drug that will decrease PCR? One is the reflex tachycardia, other is salt and water retention. So, what are uses? Hypertension. 
Remember few chromocytoma from pathology? What was few chromocytoma? Tumor in medulla that secret what? Anarachnosis. Okay, remember endocrine pathology. So if there is a tumor that is secreting norepinephrine, epinephrine, what will happen to blood pressure? Increase because epinephrine, norepinephrine will stimulate alpha receptors. In that case, you will use a non-selective alpha blocker or selective? Non-selective to use a non computator Okay, I am coming to that later on. BPH. You know, we already covered BPH in pathology. In BPH, what happens to prostate? It becomes enlarged. So, urination is blocked. In that case, we need to open sphincter as much as possible. And sphincter has smooth muscle, and smooth muscle has which receptors? Alpha 1. So, if you block alpha 1 receptors, what will happen to sphincter? It will open. And this will help with the urination or with widening. Okay. Now think, you know, alpha one blocker can be used for hypertension and can be used for BPH. So mostly, if any, what if I tell you, let's kill two birds with one stone. Means treat two diseases with one joint. What if some patient has a hypertension plus BPH? Which drug you will prefer? Blocker. Because alpha 1 blocker, alpha 1 blocker not only treat hypertension, but it will also take care of what? BPH. You now understand it? Okay. So again, you have non selective drugs. Non selective means they will block both alpha 1 and alpha 2. Then you have selective alpha blockers, they will block only alpha 1. How will you remember that? Any drug that is zosin, prazosin, doxazosin. Zosin means it is alpha 1 blocker. Osin, tensulosin. Prazosin, doxazosin, terazosin was used for hypertension. And tensulosin, I think it is used for BPH. You are selective. But in chromocytoma, you need to use a selective or non selective. Again, usually to non-selective, that will uh, block uh, both alpha 1 and alpha 2, but that has to be competitive, non-competitive in chromocytoma. We use a drug that will be competitive, non-competitive. Why? Because in chocromocytoma, what is the level of epinephrine, norepinephrine? High or low? Very, very high. So, you see, competitive inhibition can be reversed. If you are using the competitive inhibitor, epinephrine inhibitor is very high, it can be reversed. But if you are using non competitive inhibitor, can it be reversed? Whatever levels, how much higher levels of epinephrine, norepinephrine are, it cannot be reversed. So, in chocromocytoma, you will use a non selective, but also non computative. Understand this? Non selective plus non computative. Okay. And then select alpha 1 blocker. One is yohimbin. It is used in a high potential importance, but yohimbin is very old drug. Nowadays, we don't use it. For postural hypotension, we have better drugs. For importance, we have better drugs such as Viagra. So, why will you use Yohimbin? No longer used. But Mistazapin is used in antidepressant because it is a selective alpha 2 blocker. Remember, let's go to first page. If you stimulate alpha 2 receptor, what happens to norepinephrine release? Goes down. If you block alpha 2 receptor, what will happen to norepinephrine? Increase. If norepinephrine goes up, means sympathetic system goes up, uh, so it will treat what? It will treat depression. So, mistazapine is a very good drug for depression. 
Now this beta block is very important. It will take just 10-15 minutes. But for this, I want you to be really fresh. So can we cover it next time? Because this is very important. Or if you have old lectures, you can look at it. Then I can review it very fast. What uh, do you want? Review it now. Finish it now. Because this is very important. Beta blockers are really very important things. So we can finish it next time. Okay. When next time you come, I first finish this beta blocker. Then cover later on chapters of CNS. Then I cover polynomial. And next time, then I will cover cardiovascular. Yeah. Before I cover cardiovascular, you must master autonomic nerves. And let me again emphasize it. Autonomic nervous system is the most important chapter in pharmacology. Okay. It is most important. So you must master it. Is it difficult or easy? USML is all about concept. Okay, so we are just three, four slides that I will cover when you are next time in your project. Okay, so see you next time.